Yes, yes, people, we are back live. We are back live on the Sarcasm City TV YouTube for another Sarcasm City TV special. And for those that haven't seen the Sarcasm City TV specials before, it's where I sit down one on one with the biggest and best content creators in the game, get their thoughts on their team currently. But what I've been doing with this last, well, this most recent set of specials is getting the backstory. So, first and foremost, I want to say big up salute to everybody who has been watching all of the specials and the feedback has been crazy this is the most feedback and the best feedback i've ever got in regards to content i've ever done on this channel like the comments every day flying in on all the different specials as well so i just want to say big up and salute to everybody and i'm glad you lot are enjoying the content because you make it worthwhile and I'm like you lot in the comment section because even though I'm cool with these people that I'm here talking to their backstory about, I'm fans of too. And this guy, I ain't gonna lie, this is the special I personally was looking forward to the most. And yes, I am biased because first and foremost, let me just go from a personal perspective. This is the guy that put me on. For those that don't know, this is the man that put me on. Like if he didn't put me on and give me an opportunity. I don't think, no, I don't even know think. I don't have the success I've had at this rate whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? Like he was the first guy to endorse me, to, to make it in, in music terms. You know what I'm saying? What Dre is to Eminem, this guy is to me. What Eminem is to 50, that's what he is to me. So in terms of being signed, because he was the first guy to put me on and give me the opportunity on a huge channel. But first and foremost, secondly, I should say, the most underrated person to come from this space, in my opinion. And I'm not hearing anything. I think he's the most underrated. I think he's the most complete content creator from this space as well. I don't think there is a box that he doesn't tick. He can host live streams. He can be a panelist on live streams. He can talk Premier League, can talk European football, got the jokes on decks. If you want to break down tactically, he can do that. If you want to interview footballers, he could do that. Like. The list goes on and on and on. Like, it's ridiculous what this... And he's reinvented the whole wheel in regards to the content creator space. Yes, he started doing the live streams. All of a sudden, you just see man on the zone, just casually, just posting up like it's normal. I'm like, you know, I'm not seeing it. It's all casually. He's doing stadium interviews, you know, for matches at international tournament, switching languages. That's the craziest part. I'd just be in English and then just switch to French. And I'm like... This is my, and like, I see the response. I'm like, yo, this is not getting the praise and credit it deserves. And that's what these shows are all about, is giving these people their flowers. Yeah, bilingual is crazy. That's what I'm saying. A big up to Saeed, he mentioned it already. This man just interviewing Saha casually. I missed that one. This guy be doing so much. I be missing stuff that I have to go back and check. And like I said, normal, you'll see him post up on his ground with the disown thing. He's mad. He's got the interview, man. You know, the old school things that are there, for those that know. The old school commentary things. But like I say, his knowledge of the game, absolutely incredible. Like, let me, I can't clarify that enough. And the way he's managed to step away from the whole live stream, it's live streaming element. He's, I've seen him casually, yeah, working with, with United and BT. Oh, that's what's on the thumbnail. Him just posted up like that. So again, I, I have to give this man his flowers. And like I say, this one's personal to me because like I said, he was the one who gave me my 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 shot. You know what I'm saying? He was the first one to put me on. Yes, I got assistance from Lewis, Saeed, Rant. Salute to all them duns and blessed to know them all. And what they did for me is incredible. And their specials are fantastic. But without this man, I don't think all of that happened. So man has to introduce him right here. And before I do, man mentioned bilingual. This guy knows more. Like, this guy has got more languages than I still have European trophies. But welcome to the show. You know what I'm saying? My don Aaron in the building. Yes, man. What are you saying? Are you telling me? That was the best intro ever. <laughs> Love fam, man. It's only right, man. It's only right. You already know. You already know. Yeah, especially that part with the, tro the Arsenal trophies. I love that. <laughs> See, but it's only right. You always go get the shots in, fam. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> always go get the shots in, man. But how you doing first and foremost? You blessed, family. I'm good, man. I'm, I'm really, really blessed to be on your channel um i've been looking forward to, to my own special like that's yeah. how much i've been looking forward to it because i've been watching all the specials there's some specials i still need to uh, to go through uh, to get through so i've watched the troops one yeah i watched the rants one i watched um i'm in the middle of watching the czar one today so i need to finish that and i also finished the matisse one yeah i watched yeah, the matisse yeah, yeah. one 
Nah, big up, man. Appreciate it, fam, for, for watching and tuning in. And like I said, I spoke to you. I spoke to Aaron, obviously, last week, people, and I was like, all right, let's get these specials rolling. And that's why it's on a Monday, because he was like, I can only do the next week. So I was like, nah, we'll definitely make it happen 110%. And I meant everything I, meant everything I said, and I've said this to you privately, said this to you publicly. Love for everything you've done, fam for man in this space so for those that don't know i was on from i was on pi radio from a fair dive view saeed had mentioned it and what happened i remember i'll never ever forget it so we was on there doing our football for those the radio show on there that we was doing it was myself jv and stro just talking all things premier league and i never ever forget it so united had played either the saturday or the sunday so i can't remember what day it was and i was obviously watching aaron the rest of the gang gang fan camps you know what I'm saying from from the game, and then man went sleep. Woke up, shout out to Solomon, big up high radio. And then I woke up, and he was like, and he sent me a few messages, and he was like, oh yeah, this guy's hit hit you up about coming on the radio show. Where to? to. He was like, do you know him? And he sent me a picture, and it was a picture of Aaron. So I was gassed. I was like, oh shit! I was like, yeah, man knows him. I watch him all the time. And he was like, yeah, here's his number. So then I ended up ringing Aaron that night, that very same day. And then we spoke and he was like, yeah, can we come on the show? I was like, yeah, of course. It's fine. I said, is it just you? Or are you pulling up with um, Nuruddin and Saeed? And he was like, yeah, I'm bringing them with me. And then they was on that. That show's still out, by the way, people. I have to find that. So, yeah, that first show we did. And we did the show. I think we was only on. It might have been an hour at that point because the show did get extended to two hours. And then afterwards, we was there in Pi Radio talking for like two hours afterwards. That just broke all the ice. And that's where we became cool. And then following that, that's when Aaron hit me up to come on his channel. And then every day during, lock the, during the initial lockdown, mum was there every single day. And that we were just talking football. Never, yeah, ever forget. Really really. That's one of the most fun times I've had on on uh, content creating. Like, for real. That I'm, was my I'm gonna have to. I'm going to have to agree with you. And, and I'm going to have to agree with Saeed and Rance as well, because they said they both said the same thing. Lockdown, obviously, for a lot of people was was a very difficult time, which I fully understand and I sympathise with people um, that have been through tough times during lockdown. But lockdown was a blessing in disguise for men because in terms of my channel at the time, yeah, everything, and I mean everything, just shot right up. You did. Everything because people were at home. You yes. didn't have to wait to post something because, you know, usually when people go to work, you're like, mm, let me post it in the evening because then people come back from work and whatever. You right. didn't have to. Wait. You could post something at 11 p.m., wake up the next morning and have bad views because people are at home. They didn't do anything. So everyone was, in, everyone was inside and we will definitely discuss that in full as big well. Up Rums so, yeah, as well in the comments. Great time. Big up Rums in the chat. Big up to everyone in the chat. Please make sure you run up the likes on this special. Please do that. Hit the like button on the video. Make sure you share this across all of the socials as well. And subscribe to the channel. Sarcasm City TV. Hit the notification bell. Make sure you follow Aaron's channel. Subscribe. The link's in the title. And follow him across all the socials. So you see all of the fantastic things that he is indeed doing. But Aaron, before we get your... Because we ain't even spoken depth. Your like thoughts on Manchester United currently. in Ineos. Yes. Jim Ratcliffe, mm. Ten Hag, we want be jumping in the time machine. We we, we want the backstory all yeah. the way back to the start of content creating. So before you started your channel, etc., before you decided to start speaking on football in a public manner, talk to us. How did it all begin? Ooh, so it all started in 2018, um, just before the World Cup. Um, I was I was on Twitter and. I think back then already, I was kind of following the big journals that were kind of breaking news on transfers and stuff. And I was following all the transfer rumours. And what I wanted to do at the time is just make people aware of the fact that I'm talking about football. I hadn't made any videos yet, but I, was ju I just wanted to make people aware of the fact that I'm talking about football. So what I would do is I would literally just copy and paste any rumour that was out there and just post it on my Instagram story. So my Instagram stories, I would have like, 25 30 stories a day because i was just posted i was just copying and posted everything that i saw mm -hmm. so obviously that caught the attention of a few people and saying listen we actually don't want to see that we want to see you talk about football okay so i was like ah i don't know and it kind of took me it took me a few months to really decide okay i want to do this now i'm going to put out my first video 
I had a YouTube channel at the time, but the only people following me at the time were like family and friends. So I think I had like 25 followers, tops. I didn't have many. Yeah, yeah. You didn't have many. Okay, okay. And so, what was it that, what was that made you, when did the penny drop? What made you go, okay, I'm going to take this serious from just copy and pasting stories for yeah. what you, rumors you were seeing onto your Instagram page, for example? What made you go, all right, I'm going to get into this and actually start giving my own opinion and start creating content? So during the summer, I didn't do anything because I was watching the World Cup, um, didn't react to anything in particular. Um, actually, no, I'm lying. I did put out a few bits and bobs. Like, I think I put out a few a few pieces of content, like preview in the World Cup. Um, but I didn't do anything else after that. So I let the summer go by, watched the World Cup. Whatever happened, happened there. Um, the season started. Obviously, I think Mourinho was, was the manager back then. Um, so I didn't do anything. And then the penny dropped when we we got beaten by Liverpool away. And then the next day, I think, Mourinho got sacked. Or the day yeah, after Yeah, Mourinho that. got sacked. Yeah, yeah. That was the game following the three. I think so, it was 3-1. 3-1, yeah. Away to Liverpool. And I think, yeah. uh, I can't remember who played. But yeah, I think Pogba was on the bench that day. Yeah, yeah. Pogba was on the bench. So... We lost 3-1 and that's when I was like, and bear in mind, by that time, I was already watching a few people online that we know today. Okay. So we lost 3-1 and I was fuming and I was like, and I told my cousin, I, I remember I was with my cousin, I told him, yo, can I use your camera? I'm going to do this thing that these YouTubers do. That's what I used to call them back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> the Lego's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These YouTubers, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, can I, I use your camera, please? I'm going to do this thing that these YouTubers do. He's like, yeah, yeah, just use my camera, bro. It's calm. Yeah. So I took his camera, literally had, I didn't have no equipment. So I just took the camera, <laughs> took my phone, put it behind the camera as and used yeah. it as like a lighting. So I used my flash. Yeah as a lighting and I took a few books and put the camera on the few on the little on the few books that I had. <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 yeah. That was my setup. And I just started, I just went for 10 minutes straight. I voiced my frustration. Why did mm. Matter not start? Why did Pogba not start? Um the tactics weren't good and it yeah. was too defensive and it was too pragmatic, parking the bus and all of these things and boom, put it out there. Um and at the time I kind of had like basic I had basic um, editing skills. So mm -hmm. edited the way I could, posted it on my channel. And obviously I didn't have many followers. So I personally sent the link to all of my siblings. I got three of them. I sent yeah, it to yeah. all of my cousins, mom's okay. side, dad's side. I sent yeah, it to yeah, all yeah. of my close friends. And I was like, yo, yeah. check this out. Let me know if I'm good or not. And cool, let's just go with it. Mm. Went to sleep the next day. I woke up to like a hundred views. And for me back then, that was. But you thought you made it, yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. we all feel the same way. <laughs> yeah. I was like, hundred views, you know. That, that first hundred views, it's like crack. <laughs> I was like, yo. And then I wake up to other messages from my friends and family, and they're like, yo, you're actually good at this. You know how to talk in front of a camera. You okay. you keep your composure, even though you were angry. Like you made your point. Your point came across, even though you were angry. Because at the time, obviously, the rants were flowing in it. Like, we were seeing rants everywhere from Troops on AFTV, from Lee Gunner, from DT. Like, I was used to watching rants. And at the time, I was watching a lot of True Geordie as well. He was losing yeah. his shit with Newcastle. <laughs> and so, and a lot of people were telling me, you're very different to what we're used to seeing online. So you should carry on. Thanks. So from that moment on, yeah, I said, you know what? I'm going to keep this going. I'm going to keep this going, but I knew that the first two years would be tough because I knew I needed to be consistent and I knew I needed to keep pushing my content to people out there until the algorithm figures out, oh, this guy got a channel. All right, cool. Whatever, whatever. So where did that come from? Because a lot of people would either get downheartened by their, by not doing big numbers straight mm -hmm. away or not understand that they have to be consistent straight away. Yeah. Had you done anything prior? Because that's very that's very open-minded and very sensible and very logical that you stated there. I have to be consistent at this for two years to get to where I need to get to. Where did that thought process stem from? Because that's not this, normal. Yeah, I got this mentality from back from my playing days when I played professional football and semi-pro as well. You know, when when you're playing, even it doesn't necessarily have to be on that level, but when you just play football, you know 
in order to be, for example, <clears throat> sorry, in order to be fit, for example, for the season to start, you know mm. that you have to be consistent for six weeks pre-season, put in the work so that you're ready for the season to start. Mm. And I knew for me, I gave myself a five year span to make it, let's say, let's just call it that. I gave myself a five year span to make it. And I said, the first two years, I have to work as hard as I can and be as consistent as I can to then make it or for me to see the fruits of my labor. Uh, okay. And obviously, you know, things happened along the way. For example, I gave myself two years and within those two years, lockdown happened. I couldn't have predicted that, but in yes. hindsight, that was a blessing in disguise for me. Shout out to Arsenal fans. Do you know what I mean? It <laughs> <laughs> it was a blessing in disguise for me. Do you know hey, what I mean? We could say we could say the stars aligned for you. That's yeah, what we could stars say. Stars definitely aligned. The, star, the stars aligned. Yes, that is true. That is true. <laughs> so <laughs> locked up. I knew that within that five year, um, five year time span, I had to put in at least two or three years of solid work, consistent, no slowing down. Even when I didn't feel like it, because trust me, there were days where I didn't feel like making content. I had to go through it and I had to just make it, just do the work. Yeah. So um, it wasn't easy, but, you know, in the end, you know, the, the the rewards, the small rewards were there. Like I said, yeah, exactly. I'm saying I had bigger fish to fry. And like, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> you, bigger fish. you did clearly. I did. So you <laughs> I had it all in my hands, bro. You know what I'm saying? No, you had it. You did. You had it. It's all in our hands. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, back to the, the how I started. That's how I started, man. The, my first video was the Mourinho. Uh, yeah. Sorry, when we lost to Liverpool. And then the day after, Mourinho got sacked. And I was like, oh, <clears throat> that's another opportunity for me to create content. Boom. Put out another video. Um, <clears throat> and from there, really, I... Yeah, I got on, man. Um, kept it moving, and then obviously. So don't skip that. You just said there, though, that there were small victories and small rewards. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember, like, what some of those early small rewards were during that period, and how quickly yeah. they came along? So I remember um, very early into my journey, probably like a month or two months in, I I was talking to my dad, and he was like even though you didn't make it, we were having a conversation and he said, even though your dream of having a successful football career didn't work out, I can see you be successful in still in football, but in another domain, for example, do you know what I mean? And that's kind of a promise that I made myself as well when, when I stopped playing. Don't get me wrong, to stop playing football after you had that taste of professional football is, is the most hurtful thing ever. Like, I don't wish this kind of pain on anyone. Do you know what I mean? I went through a very, very tough time as a no, youngster. Let's yeah. take a pause for the cause with that because the chat's been asking about that and it does tie in to yeah. your footballing journey. So yeah. let's take you or let's go even further back in the time machine. So yeah, the time machine, go. further back to the time machine, the let's professional go. footballing career because the chat have already mentioned it. And yes, I did forget it in the intro, but you know, um, Aaron's list of accolades is a long list. I need to get a scroll. You know, that is a scroll. That's what it is. And I would have just been wheeling the scroll down. You know what I'm saying? One of them. Just sort of throw out like a carpet. So yeah, the professional football career family. How did that yeah, start? So, go there? Um, I started playing football when I was as, as young as, as early as three or four years. And my dad always tells me that I used to be mad selfish. Like every time I used to play football when I was a kid, I never wanted anyone to take the ball off me. I never wanted to pass it to anyone. Do you know what I mean? Mine was a proper, I was a selfish baller, but... Ball hog. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then growing up, moving, because I moved a lot when I was younger, innit? Because my dad's job required us to move a lot when we were kids. It didn't really help my younger footballing career because I always had to find a new team. But one thing I always found very easy was to settle in in new environments. Okay. I find it easy to make friends. I find it e easy to approach people. Um, so yeah, when I then, when we moved to Belgium, that's when I would say my younger footballing career started properly. Okay. I remember playing what year, for a team. What year was that when you moved that to Belgium? That was, from, I was in Belgium from two, 2006 till 2016, so for 10 years. Okay, okay. So when I got to Belgium in 2006, I found a local football team and, um, yeah, I started playing for them. 
I started I started out on the wing because that was like my favorite position. Um, no, Diddy, that was my favorite position. Yeah, that's like a new Diddy. thing, isn't it? People say, people say, no Diddy, yo. No people Diddy. say no Diddy. Troops said so, that in the group chat. He was like, yeah, yeah no exactly. Diddy. That was, that was like this guy, yo. No so Diddy. being out on the wing, that was like my favorite place to play on the pitch. But then the manager I had at the time was like. Your speed is unbelievable. You have incredible pace and I want to try something. I know you like to play out on the wing, but can I play you up front for two games? Just give me two games to prove to you that that's your position and I promise you, you'll score bare goals. I didn't want to do it, but I was like, you know what? Cool. Because I've always been the type of guy, when a manager tells me something, I'm always open to listen and see where it takes me first as opposed to just saying no and I don't want to do it. Nah. I would do it first. If it works out, cool. If it doesn't, then I'll respectfully, I'll have a conversation with the, with the gaffer and be like, listen, it didn't work out, but can we try something else or just put me back in my natural position? So I played out, uh, I played striker for two games. Mm -hmm. And I remember, don't get me wrong, when I was playing out on the wing, I was scoring, but I got more thrill of, out of assisting people rather than scoring. Then I played in a striker position and I remember we played... We were fourth in in our league, in the youth league that we played in. And we were playing against the uh, top of the and league. this is under... Is this under... Under 15. Oh, this, this is under 15. Okay. Okay, okay, so okay. we're playing against the team that's top of the league. Mm. I'm on the bench because I had a slight, I had a slight um, issue with, with my ankle. So I, don't, I didn't want to play the full game. So halftime comes manager tells me listen warm up you're going to play the second half and remember striker and we'd worked on a couple of moves and he taught me how to like move as a striker uh, for example very simple a, a very simple movement which is something which is a mistake that a lot of strikers do nowadays when in reality it's very easy when you have a bank of four in front of you when you have defenders very close to you don't be upset because them being close to you if you're quick that's the best thing that can happen because when you drop deep, when you if the if the defenders here, instead of you staying there and staying at the edge of the offside, come back inside and then you make Stay your run and you go. And trust me, people, just to clarify, I've played against Aaron Nightmare. I still have <laughs> nightmares to this day. I thought we was friends. I thought we was family. Nightmare. You know the Kevin Hart <laughs> meme helped me. We played five aside just to clarify before Aaron continued. Me, him, Saeed was there, Stro, straight yeah, after lockdown yeah. initially. And Aaron is quick, direct, and nightmare to play against close control dribbler the whole nine, man. <laughs> whole nine. I was looking at <laughs> teammates like, yo, help me. we well, go on, fam. We carry man. Yo, Michael, me a Congolese Gabriel Jesus, right? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember that game. And people, obviously, the people playing in the other team, as a, in the youth teams, there's names going around in it. In school, sometimes you hear, oh, you heard about this defender? Oh, this defender? Oh, he's sick. And there was that one defender that played in the other team. He was big. He was strong. He was fast as well. So I was up against him. So... I was a bit like skeptical. I was like, "Rah, do I really back myself to do this?" And I promise you, the first race that me and him had, the way I left him behind, I was like, I missed the chance. I was, but I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm feeling this today. I, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. Scored a hat trick." And from then, I played for the rest of this, that season. I played up front, and I scored 16 goals. I think 16. And I used to go home. I had like a list of all the teams. That's how I knew I'd like, because one thing about me, I don't just like football. I'm literally obsessed with it. Like okay. I, till this day, even though I don't play anymore, I'm obsessed with this sport flawless. I'm telling you, and back then, when, I was, when I was playing, when I was playing, it was even worse. It was even worse. Like I had a whole list at home of all the teams we had to play, cup games, league games and I would put a tick next to all the teams that I scored against and sometimes I'd even be angry at myself if I only scored one because I wanted two I wanted three I wanted to make teams suffer and I wanted them to remember yeah we played against this guy and he was quick that's, that's what I wanted people to say about me so um played that whole season scored 16 goals um and then obviously went up the ranks and then the weirdest thing happened when I was around 17, 18. Yeah. Um, at home, because we, because we were living in Germany prior to that, when we moved to Belgium, we had like, um, 
we had like a satellite thing, kind of the uh, an old an old version of like an IPTV today. So we had a satellite like, where we had like, like Sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like Sky over no, here. Not YouTube, Sky, but like, like an old version of, of what we know as Fire Stick today. Okay, right, got you, got yeah. you, got you. Right, 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 okay. So right. we had that. And we had bare channels, and I was, always used to keep an eye on my on the German channels because I didn't want to lose the language. Yeah. So one morning I was getting ready, had breakfast in the kitchen, and um, I'm seeing this ad, this advert. And remember back in the day, we had the Nike had this thing called Nike the Chance. Do you remember that? I don't remember it. You know, I don't. it was it was like an academy. It was like an academy where Nike would recruit people or players from all over the world. Yeah, people in the chat will know they recruited players from all over the world made it a team and then played against professional youth teams and then whoever will get scouted if you get scouted by i don't know a barcelona you sign for them so yeah, it right. will actually be like a way of helping youngsters get them a second chance at pro yeah, yeah. Uh, playing professional football yeah. so adidas did the same thing at the time in collaboration with bayern munich so the advert comes on tv i'm eating my breakfast and it's like oh um Sign up right now and you can have a light chance. bulb moment for you. That wasn't it. Like if you was yeah. a cartoon character, the light bulb went off above your head. But you was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm signing up for this. Yeah. 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 And it was like, the advert was like, oh, sign up right now and you can have a chance of playing against Bayern Munich. So I'm looking at the ad like, stop lying, man. Why are you, why are you lying? So I went to school, but still having that in my, in my mind. And I'm like, Rob, could that be real? So obviously I finished school, ran back home and, um, used my dad's laptop and I signed up. So they just had to put in basic information like your name, where you live. Um, yeah, no, the, the Crimson, the Danone Cup was something else. That was because the final of that was at Stamford Bridge. Okay. That was something else. But Nike, the chance was like, they recruited you because you had to send in like footage of how you play. They recruited you. You would then be part of Nike, the team or whatever that was called. And then they would travel to different cities and play against Barcelona youth teams, Arsenal youth teams, um, all the teams that were sponsored by Nike back then, basically. That's what happened. And then obviously I did that with Adidas. I signed up and I had to put in, I had to send in footage as well. So you had to upload like a video of like a minute and then show what you could do, whatever, whatever. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. From That's different countries. Yeah, yeah, Nike, yeah. Nike launched the Chance Project worldwide with purpose of finding younger young soccer players and providing them with the opportunity of a lifetime. One hundred global winners of the Nike Chance competition. Yes, that was that was it. Um, so yeah, I, I signed up. Not obviously in, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking they're never going to choose me, bro. Because we were like, because when you signed up at the bottom, there was like a count of how many players signed up every day. So when I signed up, we were like, it was like 250 players because it was across all German speaking countries. So oh, Belgium, wow. uh, Belgium, Germany, uh, Austria and Switzerland. Got you. So across these countries. Um, and was, obviously the requirement was that you speak German. So I signed up and at the beginning, there was like 250 of us. Yeah. Every day I'm checking the count. It's going up and I'm like, rah, 500 players, 1,000 players, 2,000, 3K, 4K. After two weeks, they stopped the, um, the, the admissions and there was more than 13,000 players that signed up. Jesus. More than 13,000. Jesus. Well, good more than 13,000 players signed up and I was like, yeah, they're mm. never going to choose me, bro. Yeah. So, and that was in the summer of, that was June 20, no, that was May 2012. Yeah. May 2012. So, 13,000 players, I'm thinking, right, they're never going to choose me. All right, it is what it is. I even forgot about it. One day, I come back from school, and I open the door, and my mum's in the living room, minute, and she sat there with a letter in front of her. Yeah. Instantly, I'm like, oh, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> I'm thinking I'm in trouble. You've got trouble, sense. My mum's like, sit down. I'm like, oh, my days. So she, took, she takes out the letter. She do, she'd already opened it, and she's like, read yeah. this. So I'm reading it, and I'm thinking this is from the from from the police. This is from from the school. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, bro? So, so, yeah, yeah. I get you. I get you. So I'm like, oh my days! But I'm reading the letter, and it says, 
congratulations, Aaron. You've been chosen amongst 13,000 players. Uh, we've trimmed it down to 112 players. You've been invited to come to Munich and train at the Bayern Munich complex. And then we're going to trim the group down from 112 to 28. Jeez, you must have been gassed at that point. So, Super duper gassed. Bro, I couldn't believe it. So my mum's like, how did you do this? Because my mum, she knew I was playing ball, but she weren't really like interested like that. She wasn't clued up into exactly what was going on. Yeah, she, she wasn't. Yeah. She didn't know what was going on. So she's like, how did you do that? Bayern Munich. I said, yeah, I just signed up for this thing and I didn't know they were going to choose me. You had to upload a video and yeah, I guess they took it from there. So she was like, okay, well, go ahead. Go do your best. Like go and shine. So I was like, yeah. I was gassed, bro. I was gassed. So um, I had to send in a few more details. They booked my flight. Um, I had to fly to Munich. And then the day I had to fly to Munich, I was so gassed, yeah. My parents drove me to the airport. There was going to be someone waiting for me there to pick me up. I was so gassed, yeah, that we got to the airport. Man checks my pockets and I forgot my passport, fam. What? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's my dad, yeah, yeah my, my dad was fuming, bro. I bet he was. Fuming. So obviously yeah, we had to ring up the people from uh, the organization from Adidas yeah. and cause I had to land that day yeah, and I had, had, to, to, get I had day, to be yeah. there the next day for training. Yeah. So I, I, I missed my fly, flight in the morning around 9am or something, rang the people up. They managed to find like a last minute solution. So instead of taking a three hour flight from Brussels to Munich, they yeah. put me on, a tr they put me on a 10 hour train journey. <laughs> Hey, you got to do what you got to do, man. Like, you got to do, do, do what you got to do to get there. You got to do what you have to do to get there. 100%. Yeah, bruv, serious pain, you know, serious pain. <laughs> so they put me on a 10-hour train journey. And, and them times, bro, I had a phone, but I didn't have no data. I didn't have no... <laughs> you didn't, there was no grab. There was no YouTube nothing, like bro. that. There was no TikTok. There was nothing to entertain yourself for 10 hours while you're, ten hours. Out of boot, while, you're on, while you're traveling countries. Literally, bro. So I rang one of my friends and I was like, yo, bro, I explained the situation. I was like, bro, I beg you, let me use your PSP, bro. I'll bring it back in one piece, bro. Don't worry. So he gave me his PSP and a charger. So I was entertained on the train for oh, like 10 hours. So he, a brethren, he a real one. He a real one for exactly. that. That's real brethren things, that. That is real, exactly. real, real brethren thing, busting you the PSP. Do you so, remember what games you was playing on the PSP? Yeah, I was playing FIFA. He gave me two games. He gave me yeah. FIFA and Zelda. Okay, right, yeah. Come, come, come. yeah. So yeah. I then uh, I left uh, Brussels at around 10 a.m. in the morning, got to Munich at 10 p.m. There was someone there to pick me up. Luckily, um, they drove me to the hotel, yeah. slept. And then the next morning, we drove to the Bayern Munich training complex. The same complex we all see on TV when it's Sky Sports transfer. Complex. And just to clarify, just, to yeah. stop, just one second. What year was this again? What year this was, was this that this was going on? This was the end of June, 2012. Okay, so you've landed, you've got there the 10 hour train journey. Yes. Then you're on your way, you've been met by the people then, you're on your way to the Bayern Munich training complex. Before we continue though, people, are you not entertained? Let's run up the likes. Like check, one, two, one, two, hit the like button. Over 140 people in here are only at 88 likes. Let's get up to 140 likes, people. Hit the subscribe button on the channel, Sarcasm City TV. Make sure you subscribe to Aaron's channel. The link's in the title, and that way you'll find all of his socials. So you must be gas bomb you've got there. Big relief, gas. you've landed. Met by the, the people them running it, and you're now on your way to the Bayern Munich training complex. What is that like? Were you like mad nervous? Was you mad excited? Is there a mixture of both? Is there another emotion you're feeling? Are you in disbelief? What is it? So I was extremely gassed. Sorry, that was um I, let me rectify that. It was the start of it was the start of July. Sorry, start of okay. July. So I get there. My dad had already, my dad had driven over as well. He was already there. So we drive to the training complex. And I am so gassed. I can't believe I'm there. Um, <laughs> that much would have went down. Um, so I got to the training complex. Uh, they checked my name and everything. Cool. Gave me my training, uh, my training gear. And then we got to see the training session for a bit before we trained ourselves. Okay. So on the main pitch where they train, yeah. I remember seeing <clears throat> all the internationals were on holiday because the Euros were done already. 
Um, so I remember seeing Daniel Van Boyten. I remember seeing Luis Gustavo. I remember seeing Ivica Olic before he got his transfer and moved away. Batman said Olic. Um, I remember seeing um, a, a fullback, a fullback called um, Diego Contento. He was there. Um, I remember seeing, I think that was it, and a few youngsters that were there. And one of those youngsters at the time was Emre Chan, because oh. he comes from the academy. Yeah. Okay. Emre Chan was there. Um, so yeah, we got to see them for, for a bit, and then they called us inside. We had to get changed and do our training session by ourselves. And obviously, they made it clear that. Today, there's 112 of you here today, but by the end of tomorrow evening, we'll pick a squad of 28 and the rest, unfortunately, will not be picked for the game against Bayern Munich. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, cool. So I remember the training session. I remember it like it was yesterday. The oh, first wow. exercise we did, we played like a 4v4 on like small sided pitches. Yeah. And the aim of that was to see how good our technique was. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, I, I understood that because obviously there was there was like small goals in it. And a lot of people focused on just scoring bare. There was that one guy that just tried to score bare. I think he scored like six or seven goals. But I understood straight away, all right, small sided games, technique. technique. So and I that, mean, and that's due to your meticulous approach to the yeah. game. That's why you knew that. Because it seems yeah. that you are very, like you said, why you're, you're, how you're so you're so much locked in. You're very, very locked in. That's the words I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And it's no surprise that you mentioned this in regards to content creating that you're meticulous with your approach and also why you're so knowledgeable and have such a great understanding of the game. Because that's crazy at that age to figure that out. Small sided, okay, it's technique, it's not goals. That's mad. Mm -hmm. I gotta give you your flowers for that. Go but on, I was I was already I was 18, 17 at the time. So even at 17, because most 17 year olds would just be thinking, all right, trials, goals. So I Best really in, in them small sided games, I didn't care about scoring, even though I knew I was a striker. I just made sure because we played it was a sorry, it was five aside. And I focused on Beb. There was this one guy, the one guy that scored all these goals. He was like, I'm playing up front. So I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. Do you, fam? I said, you know what? Let me stay at the back. I said it voluntarily. I said, let me stay at the back. And so we played like a one, like a one, two, one formation kind of thing. Yeah. So I was alone at the back, two in front of me, and then the, the one guy up front. So I just focused on my passing completion, bro. I made sure every pass was like, got to where it needed to go. Crisp pass, very hard and low and, do you know what I mean? And quick passes. And at each pitch, there were like two coaches there just taking bare notes, just taking bare, oh, not saying yeah. anything, not just coaching, there. nothing, just taking notes. So obviously, I'm now making sure every pass is on. If, if the pass ain't on, I'm not going to rush it. I'm going to wait, drag back, little skill here and there, pass it with my left if I can, pass it with my right if I can. So I did that and uh, we did three, we did 15 minutes of that five-a-side game and we did that three times. Mm. Cool. The coaches took the notes that they had to take oh, yeah. and then we finished the session with... Uh, we finished the session with 11 v 11, two times, 20 minutes. Okay. And that's when I was like, okay, I've shown my passing ability, my technique. Now it's time to score goals. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. bro. I ripped it up, bro. I promise you. Um, I remember there was, I played 20 minutes in the first game. Um, well, it was only 20 minutes. I played that first game 20 minutes. I remember there was a chance where a cross came in from the left-hand side. I volleyed it first time with my, with my right foot, crossbar. I had a chance, saved on the line, and then one chance. I really want, because I had all these chances, and I was like, when am I going to be able to use my pace? Because none of them understood, because we didn't know each other, so nobody uh, knows each other's like, actions. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there, was this one, there was this one guy, this Russian guy. He, I don't know how he knew, but I kept telling him, because he kept playing the ball over the top, and I'm a short yeah. guy. I can't do nothing with, with, those, <laughs> with those type of passes. So I kept telling him, keep it on right. the floor. And he was just like that, bro. That next pass he played, yeah. Oh my days. <laughs> the way he assisted, man, yeah. He played it into my feet. I span away from the I I like touched the ball with my left foot and span away on the other side. Left the defender for dead, used my pace, bro, slotted it in one nil, scored another one, made it two nil. The game ended uh three two, I think. And I was satisfied, but I was like, yo, job done. You did your thing. So at did that point, did you think I've made it? I've made the 28. I'm good. Yeah, at that moment I knew. Yeah. 
Okay. At that moment, I knew. And then the next day, we had another training session. Um, and we also had like sort of interviews. So you had to speak to the manager face to face, one on one, and explain why you think you should be in a team. And I remember I told the, um, the manager at the time, I told him, I want to be in a team because I believe I can make it as a professional footballer. And when I said, when I said that, he was like, and then he made notes. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Um, interview done, left the room. And then they did like a big ceremony that went on TV as well. Um, and yeah, they literally called out the names of every person that was called up in a team. Yeah. And yeah, they called up all the defenders, they uh, the goalkeepers, the defenders, the midfielders. So man's got a weight in it. So I'm not nervous. Nervous. right to the end because you're on the tackle. I get what. Even you're though saying. I knew I was making, even though I knew I was making a team, I was still nervous because I was like, Rah. and then in the end they called my name and I was happy. Um, then I flew back to Belgium. Uh, so even though before, before, before you continue about flying back to Belgium, so even though you had, you was convinced you had made it. When they yeah. called your name, what was that like? Was like was oh. that feeling the same as when you was going to the stadium, or was it more like it yeah, was? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm him. This is me. It, it was amazing because at that moment, you're like, raw. I'm gonna play against Bayern Munich. You know, like that's gonna be the probably the best yeah. day of my life. But I'm <laughs> not re I'm not realizing it at that moment. I'm not re right. still not realizing it. Yeah. So they called my name. I'm in the team. It's confirmed. Um, I fly back home. Then we had two weeks where there was nothing. We just had to get ready and train and whatnot. Then at the end of July, I went back to Munich. And yeah, that's when we had three days of intensive training. We had the right food. We had the right physios. We had every, we were treated like pros, like for three days. So what was that change like going from being in a youth setup to an actual professional setup where the preparation is meticulous? Like you mentioned, the facilities, the food, etc. It was such a nice experience because for me, especially because I'm like, okay, so this is what, what I can expect if I make it as a pro, yeah. say less, I know exactly what to do. And I know I have to work hard. Again, that mentality from even when I started YouTube, I have to work hard in order to be able to benefit from these things. Yeah. So three days of intensive training, tactics here and there. Um, so yeah. And then the day comes. The day comes, we get ready, and I'm still not realizing that I'm going to play against Bayern Munich. I'm still yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. So we get on the coach, we get to the stadium. Uh, we didn't play at the Allianz because uh, at the time they were doing some work, so we, co we couldn't play there. So we went and played in a stadium of like a second tier. At the time, there was second tier uh, of German football. And it was like something like, I think, 12,000, a 12,000-seater. 12, yeah. still a lot of people so we got to the stadium and they really treated us like pros cameras were waiting there we got off the Jeez. coach and all that um, got off the coach yeah yeah we got off the coach bro you know what I'm saying <laughs> and I remember that, Love that I remember that day like it was yesterday I remember that day yeah. I was listening the journey was like a 20 minute journey but I kept listening to the same song for some reason don't know why I was listening to uh who's on the song so there's rick ross gunplay kendrick lamar wale and meek mill and the song's called power circle okay so i listened to power circle like 15 times in a row i don't know why but it was just it was getting me it was getting me in the vibe it was locked in it's big up Jeff. yeah bro it was locked in bro man gave it the thumbs <laughs> <laughs> up to the camera yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like tying that. But... Yeah, just a tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get to the stadium. We get dressed. Um, we go out. We warm up. Bear in mind, it's still not sinking in. Still not sinking in. I'm seeing the people around the stadium. Yeah. I saw where my family was, gave them a little wave, whatever. I'm still not deep in it. Um, then we go back into the dressing room and they said, listen, this is the best days of your life. This is the best day of your lives. Just... Go out there, enjoy it. Obviously, try and work on what we worked on. But don't forget, these are professionals. They will smash you. So, yeah, as much as <laughs> yeah, they, they let you know. Yeah, like, they're not going to take you. Yeah, they're gonna not going to play around. So just take this serious, isn't it? Yeah. So cool. Then we got to the tunnel. And that's when it hit me. Because we were in the tunnel. And then, obviously, the Bayern Munich players pulled up next to us. Wow. 
And I just see, bro, I just see the biggest of centre backs pull up next to me. Cause I was like, I was standing, but I was moving around kind of like, yeah. do you know what I mean? And the guy next to me could tell I was nervous. So he like, he looked at me and he's like, are you nervous? So I turn my left, turn my head to the left. It's Jerome Boateng. That's and I'm like, yeah, I'm nervous. And he's like, is your family here today? I'm like, yeah. He's like, just focus on your family, make them proud, just play your game. So I was like, all right, cool. Say nah, you're less. a real one for that still. You're a real one for that. So went onto the pitch. We played. Listen, like the manager was right in it. They're professionals. It was Bayern Munich. We got slapped 15 0. Do you know what I mean? So Bayern Munich, of course they're going to do that to you. They're one of the best teams in Europe at that point. It's Bayern Munich. Good point, bro. Do you know what I mean? And they just came off the back of, at that time, they just came off the back of losing the Champions League final against Chelsea at home. Come on. Bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. Um, I played my game. I didn't score anything, but I managed to so show some stuff. And I managed to, at that time, I knew I could make it as a pro because um, in the second half, I was up against, because I was playing striker, so I was up against um, Holger Badstuber. And I remember I got, someone played a ball into me yeah. on the floor and I just had to race against him. And I smoked him, smoked him. <laughs> and I was like, raw. I had a bit of adrenaline because I was like, "Raw, I smoked a professional centre back." Like, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that. So the game finished, and I was so euphoric in my head that I even forgot to ask for a shirt. Like, I didn't. <laughs> you didn't think of that. You just got yeah, I didn't think of that. It's, it's the next day that I was like, "Raw, I should ask for a shirt." But anyway, yeah. Then I went back home to Belgium. Before you get to that, who else, what other stars was playing for Bayern at that point? So you've mentioned oh, Bowen, um, who else was out there? Yeah, we ain't just going to bypass this. List the stars who was out there on the pitch. Manuel Neuer. Crazy. Jerome Boateng. Philip Lahm. Uh, David Alaba was at Bayern at the time. Jesus. Thomas Muller. Uh, Arvin Robin. Frank Ribery. Mario Gomez. Um, who else? Mario Mandzukic was at Bayern at the time. Mandzukic. Um, who was there? Young Emre Chan. Um, Shakiri was there at the time. Shakiri. Um, and I think those are all the names I can remember. The only two that weren't available yeah. were Schweinsteiger and actually I lied. Alaba was there in the stands, but he wasn't available because he was injured. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Schweinsteiger was had a slight niggle as well, so because he came back from the Euros at that time, right. so yeah, bro, they put out their eighteen, bro. They didn't, <laughs> bro. To them, that was preseason. That was a preseason pre thing to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's preseason, preseason to them. And did any moments happen? And was there anything in the game that happened where you was like, you're not catching that if you're in the stands or if you're watching on TV, for example, was there any moments like a piece yes. of skill by somebody that where someone's reacted to something or anything like, or them getting angry with each other or running jokes or anything like that? It wasn't, it wasn't a, a specific skill, mm -hmm. but it was just like over the overall conception of what we see on TV and what we see in real life is completely different. For example, I knew at the time, Robin and, and Ribery, they're quick. But when yeah. you see them in real life, bro, Oh my days. <laughs> you see the you see quick. You see how they're electric like, them, man. They're like machines, bro. That like they literally built on TV, Arvin Robin looks like a stick. You see him yeah. in real life. That guy's hench. Oh, so he actually has like physical attributes. Oh well. bro, he, he is hench, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So uh there was that that impressed me. Uh Tony Cruz's simplicity. Oh bro. To see a player just live off receiving the ball and passing it but doing that to perfection for me was impressive yeah, I get and i think until this day that's what we're seeing Great. that's exactly what we're seeing a man just making a living off controlling and passing the ball yeah that is the most beautiful thing to me to see yes i like flary players yes i like players to do tricks and flicks and all of that but sometimes there's beauty in simplicity and i love that do you know what i mean and then the the, the third person that impressed me was thomas muller man this notion of knowing where to be at the right time, bro, you, it, it's a skill. It's Absolutely an actual skill. skill. Anticipation is a very, very, very underrated skill. Absolutely. And he, so has that in a, he has that in abundance. And again, he's another one. Till this day, we're seeing it. Yes. We're seeing it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that was very impressive to see, man. Um, 
So yeah, I went back to Belgium after the game. Before you go though, because I've I've heard you tell this story before. Just one last thing before you go back to Belgium. Was there yeah. not a piece of skill that happened, and the Bayern players reacted? To, did somebody get megged or something like that? Somebody got yeah, 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 yeah. I megged them. Um, I megged one of the yeah bypassing. That. The... Talk about it, man. What happened, man? Explain the piece of skill. Who you megged? How it happened? And the reaction as well. Talk about it, fam. We ain't buying. So, we giving you your flowers. Talk about so, it. Uh, so I'm I'm playing as a striker, but I'm drifting like from left to right in it. So I'm a bit everywhere because I want to be a nuisance. So I'm on the right hand side, and the left back, uh, sorry, the left hand side, and the left back plays the ball into me, and I could feel I could already I kind of scanned a little bit, and I could see the the guy's name is Mitchell Weiser. He plays for uh, Bremen now. Okay. So I could see Mitchell was behind me in it, so he was coming closer. So I was like, mm, I need to try and get rid of him. So I controlled the ball with my soul with the sole of my foot. Tried to spin away from him, yeah. but then he caught me. Like he caught up to me. So instead of stopping, I kind of dragged the ball back and put it through his legs. And this, this is what it looks like. Yo, look at fire! That with yeah. the... <laughs> so I, I put it through his legs, and that was right in front of the Bayern Munich bench. Yeah, and I could see Ribery and Luis Gustavo both went. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a bit <laughs> that's vile that's vile like the professional spot professional footballer you know and they got a reaction from river it's going oh, that's fine I to <laughs> so that. when that happened that was quite funny it's quite funny um so yeah i went back to belgium yeah, and um, one of my friends who was a, who's still a professional footballer till this day his agent hit me up because obviously he had been made aware um, by my friend yeah. so he was like listen I, I heard the thing that you played against Bayern that's a great thing to have on your CV um, what would you say if I plug you with some teams and you go and go on trial so I was like yeah of course yeah. so I went on trial in Holland um, and there's this team called uh, Willem II um, oh, yeah, very, yeah. yeah old school team if you know you know in the comments mm -hmm. I went and done a trial there for two three days because they were actually, they were in pre-season and they were on camp. Yeah. So they were in camp. So I joined them for like three days and trained with them. Um, but they ended up not giving me a contract because the position I played in, they said they were already like... Stacked. Yeah, there was there was like three or four players in, in that position already. So it was kind of hard for me to get in there. Um, then I went on trial to a few teams in Germany. Um, and I ended up playing for... a third sorry fourth tier team in germany let's go um played there for about two seasons then i went back to belgium and then started to play in the lower leagues over there and that's where i would say i still love the game but when i was playing in germany i got introduced to the other side of football which is the ugly oh, side right. of it. um obviously as fans we we always think that it's all glitz and glamour it's, you know, it's, things are always going to happen. Things, everything's positive and everybody's friends with each other. And, you know, and this is why there's a lot of things that I say when I say them, people think I'm, I'm exaggerating or I'm being overly harsh, but I know why I'm saying these things. Do you know what I mean? It's only recently that people found out, for example, I'm just throwing something out there. Only recently people found out that Marnie and Salah used to hate each other. Oh, see, I, hey. see, I didn't even know that. It's actually legit. I thought it was always a media thing. Is yeah, they, they didn't. They, they never liked each other, bro. They and actually was, had dislike for each other. Crazy. The only thing that was keeping them together or was the glue between the two was Firmino. Uh, why did they dislike each other? Is no idea, bro. In, no football, idea. in football, these things happen, bro. It's the, it's the Colin Sheringham thing, isn't it? First, Do you know yeah. what I mean? In, the, in in football, these things happen. If me and you play on the same team, I might hate you just because you're more money than me. And these are the things that happen in football, unfortunately. Do you know what I mean? I was playing football in when I was in Germany and I was playing there, yeah. There were people that were the teammates that weren't that didn't like me out like off the pitch. We did not yeah. talk, bro. But on the pitch, you'd think we're best friends. Yeah, because, because we you know, knew like, football is a different language. That's why because we because we knew on the pitch, we're here on a mission. We're here to win as a team. Off the pitch, I don't have to talk to you. I don't have to chat to you. Obviously. We had friends off the pitch. I made friends off the pitch, of course. And they're still friends with me till this day. But I didn't like everyone. And I'm, I'm bro, I'm being honest. And not everyone liked me. So yeah, yeah. this is the harsh reality in football, man. And obviously, you get, in, you get introduced to stuff like blackmailing and, 
you know, people receiving brown envelopes. I know me and you in our, in our streams, we always joke about the brown envelopes, but yeah, these yeah, are true yeah. stories, bro. These are true stories. Do you know what I mean? A, a player crazy. might be a player might be frustrated because he's not playing. He goes to the gaffer's office and says, "Yo, gaffer, am I doing anything wrong? Can I play? Yeah, you can play. Run me, run me ten k, please." Yeah, look, these are things that happen, bro. You know, managers taking commissions off transfers and all of these things, bro. These things happen. All these underhand shady things. Yeah. Bear with them. Bear with these things happen, bro. Do you know what I mean? I I'm, I'm gonna say to you. I'm gonna tell you off air, but. Last year, I went to a, I went to a birthday party and there, there was a footballer there that I know and we're, we're cool. And I spoke to the, he's still active till this day. And he spoke to me and he said, yo, I went on loan to a different country and I left that team on loan and came back to the UK because I wasn't getting paid for six months. And when he told me the name of the team, I was like, raw, I thought these men had money. He's like, bro, it's not what it seems, you know, it's not what it seems. That's mad. That's mad. So I had to learn the ugly side of football. You know, people, your own teammates, which trying to, bro, your own teammates, bro, trying to break your leg in training because they, they want to be in your position. It's mad. That is great. So, like we're not all here, like you said, on the same mission, trying to win as many games so the team is successful. Exactly. Bro, that's a lot. That's a lot of people in life. A lot of people will will sink the whole will sink a whole ship because they can't be captain. A lot of people are like that. A lot of people. We're going for and, and yeah, so I got introduced to, to that ugly side. And at the time, I have to be honest with myself as well, you know. Um, at the time, mentally, I don't think I was ready to be a professional footballer because yeah. it to be able to play football professionally is one thing or semi-professionally, but yeah. to when you're young, because at the time I was what 19, 20, 21, yeah. when you're seeing some of these things, bro, it can mess your head up, bro. Honestly, yeah, facts. you got to be it, mentally very, very strong to deal with the things you're seeing and potentially happening to you. And just the if, whole unfairness of it all. Or unfairness have, to a, a friend of yours. Yeah, yeah. if you don't have the right people around you, bro, you will go mad. That's why uh, when you see some of these ballers go crazy and, you know, splash cash on, on dumb things and go out and drink. Yes, we're criticizing them. But at the same time, I'm like, you don't know what these men go through, bro. That's why I can't sit here, and I know we've talked about this situation multiple times. I can't sit here and be like, be like all the rest piling in on Sancho because of the situation with Ten Hag. Because I've seen situations like that. I've seen the manager not playing some of my teammates just because he don't like you don't like the way you look, bro. And this could be white, black, yellow, red. He just doesn't like you. Oh, wow. He just don't like you. He's he just person, doesn't yeah. like you, so he's not playing you. Yeah. You could be good. You can be scoring goals. You could be, he doesn't like you. Yeah. And I've seen it, bro. I've seen, I've had managers where, <laughs> I've had managers where whatever he says goes. Like you can't even, not even challenge his opinion, but just ask him, okay, Gaffer, why are we doing this, please? Explain it to me. Some Gaffers don't like that. They just want- They'll, they'll just be like, it's my way or the highway. There you go. Do you know what I mean? And when I talked about Ten Hag and I said, Ten Hag is a manager like that, People said I'm crazy. People said I'm overdoing it. He's that type of manager. And I was the type of player. I was the type of player that needed an arm around my shoulder. I needed to be put in confidence. I needed to be, I needed to have a, a good feeling, a good relationship with the gaffer so that he can instill confidence in me and go, bro, just do your thing, bro. Do your thing. You're going to mess up and I'm going to tell you when you mess up. But when you do good, I will reward you. Crazy. I needed yeah, that. So first, when first. I'm seeing this Sancho situation, I can relate because I'm I'm similar to him. So when I personally, for me, I would not have been able to play under a manager like Ten Hag. I would no, yeah. never. I no, yeah. mm -mm. no. I hear you. That's so, fair enough. Um, yeah, man. I've seen the ugly side of football, um, and because I was mentally fragile at the time and I didn't have the thick skin and the mentality I've got today. Because you were younger at that point, like you said. Yeah, I was, so, I was yeah, young, man. You off guard. The game can catch you off guard as well, because that's got to be a big eye-opener to you. Coming from, like you said, it looks all glitz and glamour on the outside. And then you actually get on the inside of football and you see, ah, it's really ugly here. There's so, so when, many just things going on that are just wrong. Yeah, go on, carry on. Yeah, no, so when I see these debates and people say, oh, footballers are earning too much. No, they, they're not, they don't. Because 
I would like to see uh, people that do a regular nine to five go to work. And I want to see how they would react to their manager or their, their higher up or their team leader, not chat to them just because they don't like you. Yeah. I want to see how you no react. Other reason. Yeah, just no other reason. I just don't like you. I would like to see people go to the nine to five and react to, I don't know, uh, a next man sabotaging your laptop. I want to see how you react yeah, to that. Uh, I hear you. Because these are things that happen in football. So when you see these men getting paid the money that they're getting paid, yes, sometimes we can disagree. Oh, he's getting paid too much. Cool. These conversations happen. But ultimately, I think footballers deserve every penny that they get because the bullshit they have to deal with on a daily basis, bro, it's mad. It's crazy, bro. Like, imagine people knowing you've got this much money and you're a target as well. Look at the amount of ballers that got their house broken into. Yeah. That is true. Half of these guys out there, these fans that speak on football is not, uh, these fans that speak on football is earning too much money. How, I want to see, yeah, I want to see, because remember when Pogba's house got broken into and his nanny and the kids were there? I want to yeah. see how you react to that. Yeah, that's true. You're at work and you get a phone call. There's a kidnapper in your house, yeah, and your nanny or your, your wife is there, your partner and your kids are there. I want to see how you react to that. And they're asking for X, Y and Z. Do you know what I mean? Most of these fans out there that talk about football wouldn't last two days in the football business. Two days. Because the things you would see, they would blow your mind. And you would be shocked for life. Scarred as well. This is crazy. You know what I mean? Look at, yeah, exactly. Look at, um, shout out to Rums. Yeah, look Leon at Bailey says, Bailey's look at Leon Bailey's recent interview about the Jamaican Football Federation. Yeah, it's like, come on, Jamaica, get it together. Do you see what I mean? I and mean, bro, in Congo, it's even worse. Like, some of the players have to pay their own ticket to go to Congo. It's not even the Federation paying for it. That's They're paying for, for that. So every international break, they're having to pay 1K, 2K to fly to Congo and then fly back after the international break. And on top of that, the facilities are awful. Yeah. So a lot of these footballers are going through shit, man. Mm. They're going through bare things, bro. Going through a lot. This is the ugly side of the game. So, so you mentioned, yeah, go on, fam, carry on, carry on. No, I was just going to say, like, it's not just no, the glitz and glamour. It's not just the money. It's not just, oh, look at this player. Oh, he's getting 350k a week, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? But don't get me wrong. Some players, they are actually, like, idiots. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, some they're, players, they're, they're assholes. Yeah, like, some players things that happen to them, they deserve. Yeah, yeah. So, some players actually overdo it. Like, they get a lot of money and they're just lazy. Like, some players are like that. Do you know what I mean? Some players are like that, but you find out that most of the players that do that are the players that know they're going to get sugar-coated. Anything and everything they do bad will be forgiven. That's why they do the same thing over and over again. I'm not going to name no names, but we've seen a certain United player go through the same thing over and over again, and people keep telling me he's took responsibility now. He's learned from his mistakes now, Aaron. Get off his back now, Aaron. He's learned. He's responsible. But we keep seeing the same pattern, the same thing. Why? And I said it. You keep you let him do this over and over again, he's gonna keep doing it because he knows, yeah. oh, they're not gonna forgive me. Yeah, they're gonna forgive you. So let me just keep taking the mick until I can't just do it anymore. Liberties. Until they throw the buck at me. That's right. Just there you taking go. liberties. You're just gonna continue. So, There's no repercussions for your bad the, actions. Carry the on. The ugly side of uh, the ugly side of football, I wouldn't wish that on anyone, man. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I would I would not wish that on anyone. And but at the same time, I'm glad I went through these moments because it made me who I am today. Um, Clearly, yeah, that's that's like, is the good thing. You took the good from a very very bad situation. Yeah, that's what I um, would say. Absolutely, um, it made yeah. me who I am today. So I don't have any regrets in terms of, you know, my footballing career. Of course, I would have liked to play yeah. professionally till this day. Of course, I mean, I would have been able to put my family in good conditions and all of these things. Of course, every kid wants that. But yes. you know, in life, things happen for a reason, and I believe that that had to happen for me to be who I am today and to get to where I am today. Those things mold you, like good exactly. or bad. The good and the bad that happens to you mold you into who you are. And you have to take the good from the bad, even if it's the worst possible, even if it is a crushing disappointment. And yeah. you've clearly taken the disappointment from not becoming a professional footballer. Also, your approach to football is the same approach you had already from a young age in regards yeah. to the content creator space. So we'll go back to that, do a little time jump in regards to that. And you mentioned the small rewards at the very start. So what were the small rewards where you was like, okay, yeah. this is going so, in the right direction? So the small reward was, um, like I said, my dad and myself having a conversation and him saying to me, 
I like the fact that you're still working in football because I know how much you love it and I know how much it hurt you not to be able to carry on playing football professionally. Right. So all I can tell you is to not give up and to have that same mentality and to push through and to keep working as hard as you can because I know you can do this. Yeah. So those were like little rewards for me that I could see from my siblings, from my dad telling me I'm doing well, people sharing my stuff. Because in the beginning, I didn't have many followers. So people okay, sharing so people my sharing stuff. sharing your stuff on like Twitter and Instagram and things yeah, like that. Yeah, people sharing my stuff on Twitter, on Instagram, on Snapchat. I was very active on Snapchat as well because I had a lot of people there. And it was extra hard for me because a lot of people on Snapchat that I had at the time were mostly from Belgium and Germany. So they watched stuff that they probably didn't even understand because they don't speak English. So that made it even harder for me to really break through. But obviously, through making friends here and there along the years, more people over here in the UK were sharing my stuff. Um, so yeah, those were like small wins that I started to see. Um, started to make my debut on, on United Stand as well. Uh, before that, actually, I met Saeed. I was going to say, so like, so you're having these small rewards, you're putting out content consistently, your numbers are going up on the socials and presuming your numbers are going up on your channel your views are going up what was the first was the first big moment you had was it meeting Saeed or did you have a moment yeah. before that where you was like oh geez I'm well on the right track like a number a, a video doing a certain number of views or was it meeting Saeed yeah it was it was meeting Saeed because I came across his channel on YouTube because obviously when you watch a lot of football you have suggestions and whatnot yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> At the time, I was watching AFTV a lot. I was watching... Like us all. We was all watching yes. yeah, like was all, watching man. Everybody, TV everybody TV watching AFTV. Um, I was watching Cheeky Sport a lot. Shout out oh. to Joel. Um, I was watching True Geordie a lot. Yeah. Um, and I was watching... Uh, yeah, that was it. So when I came across... When I was watching all these things, suggestions came through. So then I saw United Central. I was like, oh, United Central. Let me click on this. And it was Saeed, and he was in the little bar that he was talking about with the audience, <laughs> yeah. the juice bar, and they were just talking about football, and I liked yeah. it. Yeah. And I found out that he he's going to games as well. So I think one day um, after a game, I just walked up to him and I said, yo, I'm Aaron, I'm a content creator as well, I'm starting off. Um, okay. And yeah, from then... Do you remember what we, year that was? Do you remember what yeah, year that was? I, I, I even remember the game. Okay, it go was on. A, yeah, what was the game? Go on. FA Cup game, Man United against Reading. Jeez. Yeah. I don't even remember that game. That's how far. Yeah. <laughs> it was Man United against Reading. And I remember me and Saeed walked back to um to the old Trafford tram station to the tram stop. Yeah. And I had a ca had the camera from my cousin and I was yeah. vlogging in it. And me and him were talking about the game. Yeah. So from then, me and him just linked up, we exchanged numbers, and from then really, me and Saeed became good friends man. just like that you just rolled up to him and was like i'm a content creator you lot just hit it off in regards to the conversation and just became cool since then That's crazy, since yeah. then bro since That's then crazy. and then he yeah. got me into doing videos with nodin when we all were on the united stand um mark gave us a show he gave okay, us okay so before you go that let's just skip that how did you then so how did you go from working with saeed to then obviously you met nodin the United stand. How did the introduction to that channel come about? Was that through Saeed? Had you seen fan cams prior to that? Did you see Saeed on there? No, yeah. Are you seen Rants on there? Flex, the, the Flex and Rant show. Like, was you familiar? Yeah, point? absolutely. I was watching the Flex and Rant show on, on a weekly basis, bro. I was yeah, a fan. Facts. Yeah, facts. I was a fan of the show, bro. I was looking yeah. forward to it. Every Monday, I was there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Flex and Rant show, I was watching that. Um, and then Saeed was kind of like, yo, you should get on the fan cam as well. And I was like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know if they're going to let me. He's like, nah, bro, just get on it. Yeah. And then my first fan cam was in 2017, I think. October 2017. I can't remember the game exactly, but it was October 2017. So I got on a fan cam and from there, yeah, every time I could get on a fan cam with United Stands. on I, fan cams. And I what was, was it like? Like, was you doing the fan cam? Because now that's an even bigger channel. Obviously, Saeed's doing his thing as well. Was you nervous doing that? Was there a certain point where you was like, all right, I, I want to hit a certain amount of numbers. This will do great for me. Was there any thought? Or was you just like, all right, let me just run the fan cam? I, I was hella nervous, bro. I can't lie. <laughs> Talk about it, man. That's because, a, that's a, because that's I knew... Story. Because I knew that fan cam is going to go to bare people. So I can't say anything wrong. I can't be stuttering. I can't be... Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, with time, 
I knew how to, you know, speak in front of a lot of people. And the, bro, the worst thing was, not only was I thinking it's going to a lot of people, not yeah. only can I not make a mistake, but there's people yeah. around, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So you've got to make sure you say all the right things, bust in a little yeah. joke so people can laugh. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So you, oh, I, it, was, it was like performing in front of an audience, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's exactly what it's like. Yep. So, that's exactly, for those that don't know, that's what it's like at games with fan literally. Camps. Trust me. Like, fan camps, you do not want to say anything wrong. Like, I've done a couple, I've done Chelsea fan TV a couple times, even I'm like, oh, you got to be on point here. Like, you got to be on point. <laughs> you, know what I mean? like, you have to be. It's like, whoo, like, you have to be. So, salute to everyone who do doing fan camps because they're not easy, especially when people are around as well. And in particular, United fan at that time. So you've done a fan camp. You've then obviously continuing to make your own content, continuing yeah. to go to games, etc. Was there a point where you realised you became a household name? Because I spoke about this with Rants. That roster at that time at the United stand, we have never seen anything like it before. And I don't think we will ever see anything like it again. And I'm talking about in terms of depth. All respect to AFTV because what Don Robbie did was cold. You had troops over there. You had Ty over there, RIP, Claude over there. But the depth of the roster, because you had Flex, you had Rance, you had yourself, you had Saeed, you had Nuruddin, you had Adam Matic. Like the list goes on and on and on. And it's it's crazy. So did when did you realize like, all right, yeah, one well, first question. When did you realize you're a mainstay over there? And you're you basically got the death row chain. You're a part of the Avengers. Yeah, like, yeah I say like that's what it is. You got the Avengers stamp of approval. When did that? When did that hit you? It hit me when I was just walking through town randomly, and someone recognized me and said, "Yo, you're that guy from United Stand." I'm like, "Whoa, what?" And that's when I was like, "Oh wow!" So people really watch, man. Like, do you know what I mean? This, this, this is really it. That's when it hit me. And you're right. Respectfully to all other fan channels out there. Apart from AFTV, that lineup, Flex, Rance, Saeed, Nordin, myself, Adam, um, Rick, um, that for me is probably the, the best fan cam lineup I've yeah, ever been part of and I, I would and we've ever seen looking from the outside in. Yeah. The best. That is that's I said I've said it before, I'll say it again. That was their throw. That was because Tupac, what? Dr. Dre, Snoop. <laughs> Nate Dog, corrupt, does like at that point. Whoa, ridiculous. Yeah, and because when you every time United played and you had those different reactions, you would have the poignant reaction from Rant. You would have the rant from Saeed. Yeah. You would have the tactical analysis from Rick. You would have the calm reaction from Adam. And you would have yeah. a mix of a bit of everything from me. Like it yeah. was you would have the rant from Nuden. So you had a bit of everything. Yeah. And that's what made that's what made us so good back then, bro. Honestly. Oh, and um, it's such a shame, yeah. Such a shame that Mark didn't see the vision. That he didn't see Talk about how far this could have been taken, bro. We could have been, yeah. We could have been a powerhouse. More than, even more than they are today. Yeah. We could have been bigger than what they are today. And I'm saying this... Bro, I'm saying this wholeheartedly because the lineup was brazy, bro. Could you imagine if we were still on there, if we had all followed that same vision, yeah? We hit a milli and then we go on pre-season tour, fam. Oh, oh my days. <laughs> that would have been, yeah? Obviously, Flex and KG did their thing with United Few, and I love the content that they do when they fly abroad and all that. Shout out to Flex and KG. But fam... Could you imagine all of us on, on United stand here doing a pre-season tour, fam? Epic. Epic. That content would Epic. have been gold. Epic. <laughs> or even a pre-season, like a random Champions League night, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See those vibes that we have with each other? And when Rance was talking to you, yeah, and saying that we all have a genuine bond. Bro, we do. Yeah, you all have a genuine bond because you're we there week in, bond. week out making content. That's how you build friendships and brotherhoods and... You lot all became fam because you're all still cool to this day. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? And you're part of it as well now. Like, you can call me on a random Tuesday and just yeah. chat. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. call, call Renz. That's the crazy part about it. I've said this before because you lot was the first wave on that channel. Imagine all of you lot was still there and then the rest of us was about. Imagine, like, you then get a me, a Bainesy when he was about, the wave behind, and we all mm. click up as well. 
Like yeah. they did with Avengers. You had Avengers Assemble people. Then you had Age of Ultron. Then you had Infinity War. Then you had Endgame. <laughs> that's what it was supposed to be, was the continuation as you're adding more and more. Because that's what it is. We're all characters. We're all personalities. And you lot started that and kicked that off. So imagine the rest, what it could have well, became. It would have you know been... Saying? If you add in the people that, like, for instance, that if you add in a Hodge, if you add in a Rhino, a Leon, for example, a Traps, you know what I'm saying, a Double A, like, a, like all these people now, I'm a part of that class as well, people don't get mistaken. You add in the second class, the second wave. Yeah, go on, carry on, fam. Nah, it was, it, it was the sickest lineup ever. And it's a shame that Mark didn't see the vision, bro. It's a shame that he had... Obviously, it was his channel, so, you know what I mean? He, he wanted to do whatever he wanted to do, but I just think that the way he went on about things was very foul, man. Very, very foul. I feel sorry for some of the, the core people that helped build the channel to what it is today, got treated the way they got treated. Flex and Rance in particular. Do you know what I mean? Flex was a teacher at the time, yeah? yeah. And bro, for men to drive up to Manchester, bro, you know how long that takes? You yes. know what I mean? And sometimes you even got traffic in between as well to get to the games, yeah? To do the games, to watch the games, sorry, to do the fan cams, to, and then Josh was up there as well. Uh, Josh and Miles were there as well. Yeah. To, to then edit all of that stuff, put it out, make sure it's all crisp, quality, everything. Yeah. And then drive back down to London. Yeah. Bro, Flex would sometimes finish at like 1 a.m. if it's like a Champions League night. He would finish at like stupid hours, flying back down to, to Luton and right then back. have like one or two hours sleep and then go for work. Do, do his job because he was a teacher. Rance was working at a gym. So sometimes man would, bro, like run on like two hours of sleep, bro. Fact so story. I mean, I, f I felt sorry for these guys and to see the way they got treated, fam. I, I weren't happy with that, bro. I wasn't. I'm not the type of, I'm never the type of guy to come out and call people out and say, listen, but that particular thing, bro, I weren't happy with that. Never mind how I got treated. Okay, so so we'll get to that. So you're on the United Stand. You've become a part, like I say, man, you got the death row chain. You know what I'm saying? You became yeah. a part of the Avengers. You're at the Avengers complex. You're a part of it. The, the channel is skyrocketing. You man are just blowing up every other week, twice a week when there's game, whenever there's fan camps, because I was locked in at that point. Yeah. Because I found the channel through all you man. So I'm watching. So boom. You man are then ascending, ascending, ascending. Rant's already mentioned it on this special nights out in Manchester. All you mm -hmm. man, that brotherhood and that bond is there. When did it first then dawn to you? Like, oh, this is going south. Like, Goldbridge isn't doing what he's supposed to be doing type of thing. Like, people are getting mistreated. Like, when did that start? What was the first thing for you? It started when... Um... Oh, yeah, I forgot to say, we had a show as well. Me, Saeed, and... Oh, yeah, talk about the show. Talk about the show, yeah. fam. How did that come about? Yeah, let's not skip that, actually. How did yeah. the show come about? So I literally just messaged, I emailed Mark at the time and I was like, me, I think me, Nudd and Saeed should have, a, should have a show on the channel because, mm -hmm. you know, we're in Manchester and why not? And he was like, at first he was a bit apprehensive, but then he was like, you know what? All right, cool. Mm -hmm. um, so he gave us like a 20 minute slot every Friday. <sighs> 20 minutes with Saeed and Nudd is damn near impossible. So, but we, we made it work. Do you know what I mean? We made it work. Yeah, facts. And then for some reason he pulled the show. Don't know why. He, he's got his own... His he did, so he never told you why. So how long did the show go on for before he pulled the show? Couple months. Okay, and he just pulled the show and he just didn't say why. Did he contact you? Was it? I remember he, he told me the reason, but I can't remember. I can't remember. Okay, 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 first. But yeah, that was about the show. The moment I realized this is going south is when, and I'm just speaking for myself. Yeah, and I, I didn't get a penny from the channel, and I wasn't expecting to get a penny from the channel because I just did it because I loved it. Yeah. It all started to go south for me when, uh, obviously, obviously, I was on the United Stand fan cams, and then one day Terry hit me up, Terry Flewers, yeah. and shout out to shout Terry. Out Terry, and shout he Terry. wanted me on a show because it was a preview to the Chelsea game, the FA Cup Chelsea game, where Rashford scored that crazy free kick. So there was a show prior to that, and Terry wanted me on the show as a guest to preview the game. So I was like, yeah, cool, why not? Cause I was following the, the football terrace as well. So I was watching it. So I was like, oh, I'm going to be on a football terrace. Say less. Cool. I went on Terry's channel. We chopped it up, had a good show. I get a message from Mark afterwards saying, yeah, nah, you're not on the channel anymore because you went and worked with, with Terry. So I was like, hold on a minute. You're not paying me. We didn't sign any no. contract. Nothing's been, put, nothing's been put on paper, black on white. So what are you angry for? 
yeah, he's a direct competitor and all of these things. And so I was like, all right, cool. No worries. If I'm off, then I'm off. But then he came back and said, ah, right, you know what? Um, just make sure you don't go on there anymore if you want to be on the channel or whatever, whatever. That's when I kind of realized. Oh. So that was the first. Uh, and do you remember what year that was that he said that to you? What year was it when Rashford scored that free kick? People in the chat will know. I, I hey, would, chat, which, wait, which I free think, kick are we talking about? I want about? to say 2019, but I'm not too sure. Yeah. I want to say 2019. Okay. So, um, okay, that happened. Yeah. And then this, the second time when I knew it was going south, and that's when I got kicked off the channel, is yeah. when United played or had to play against Derby. They had to... 2020, okay. Was it a free kick against Chelsea, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, the free kick against Chelsea, yeah, the same today at 19 20. Yeah, yeah, go on, carry on, carry on. Then United was scheduled to play against Derby in the FA Cup. And I remember it was it was talked about a lot because Rooney was there at Derby. Oh. So initially, I was meant to tag along with Adam, Nordin, and no, sorry, with Adam and Said to drive to, I think Nordin as well, to drive all the way to Derby and watch the game because we had already been on a trip together to watch Wolves away. So because we had a because we went on a trip together uh, to watch Wolves away and to watch Newcastle away, we wanted to make it like a thing where we go to regular away games. Yeah. So, um, but because I was working until late, I was like, oh, sorry, man, then I can't join you lot because I'm working till six. So by the time I finish, you lot will be on the on on your way to Derby oh, already. Yeah. You you guys go and enjoy it, have fun, yeah. and we'll, I will see you next. I'll see you next week. So in my mind, I was like, okay, cool. Since I'm not going to the game and I wanted to vlog it, initially I was like, hmm, let me try and do a uh, let me try and do a watch along because I had never done a watch along, but I was watching watch alongs and I was like, this could be a good idea for my own channel. Yeah. So I'm announcing on Twitter, um, hey guys, I'll be on Twitter, um, I'll be on YouTube tonight doing a watch along yeah. to uh, the United Derby game. Um, so everybody's like, oh, all right, cool. Tune into Aaron's thingy, blah, blah, blah. So Mark must have posted uh, a tweet about him doing a watch along as well. And then someone replied in the comments and said, oh, are you not joining Aaron's watch along? Um, and then he replied to that person and said, no, he's not going to be seen on the channel anymore anyway. That was his response. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That was his response. And I didn't see that response, but someone sent me a screenshot of that response in my DMs. Mm. And he was like, yo, Aaron, did you see this? And I'm like, huh? No, I didn't see that. Mm. So again, me being me, bro, if there's a pro if I have an issue with someone, I'm not going online, innit? I'm talking to you in person first. Directly, because we're cool. Like we have we've had conversation. We actually have right. some form of relationship where the so, lines of communication are open. Go on, carry on. So I had his number, so I messaged him. I was like, what is this? Like what does that mean? Mm. Yeah, uh, the United Stand is the only place we do. Uh, the United Stand is the only place where we do watch alongs. If you want to do your own thing, go ahead, but it's not going to be on this channel. So I'm like, again, you're not paying me. There's no That's contract. Contract zero. There's no contract. Nothing going on, black and white, that we that we could agree on to say Aaron can't do watch alongs. We didn't say none of that. So at that point, I was like, you know what? All right, cool. People say I got kicked off the channel, but that's literally the end of it. That was the end of it. So, um, yeah, so I left I left the channel, did my own thing, and then obviously lockdown hit. And before like you carry said, on, so that yeah. happened. So that's then the ending of, of you being on there. And is this before everybody else had left? So is this before Rance had left, Saeed had left, Flex, et cetera, et cetera? No, this was, this was after... No, this is when I left. Yeah, this is before Rance left. Okay, so before, so you said, okay, first, first. Now, just like, I'm yeah. just getting the timeline together because obviously Rance spoke on this on this special as this as did Saeed as well. Make sure you check it out. I, so I, don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm. I know it's tough to remember. Yeah, yeah, I get you. I get you. I is it before That's or after Rance left? But it it was definitely close to either before or after Rance left. Because okay, yeah, okay. So, um. See that comment there? That's exact. That's that's why I respect Don Robbie. Says, so many AFTV people do their own thing. Don Robbie, Don Robbie lets them on his because Don Robbie understands that. All right, if you go blow up individually, and then when you come to my platform, guess what? It makes my platform and my individual brand break up. That's why Don you should encourage everybody who is on your platform to go and do their own thing. 
Yeah, it, it was after, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was after because nothing. I remember watching. I remember watching the live stream that uh, before Rance left, and I remember watching the video of him ex of him explaining why he left. I remember watching that. So it was after. Yeah, it was definitely after. So I then released my own video, um, not knowing it would completely blow up. It got like a hundred over a hundred thousand views. I remember or watching. I remember watching. I do. Um, I do. So I, I announced my my departure from the channel or explaining why I'm not on the channel anymore. And I think a few weeks after that, Rand hit me up and he was mm. like, yo, I seen your video. You know, the same thing happened to me. And we both explained the details. Excuse me. We both explained the details of why we're not on the channel anymore. And he was like, yo, I'm trying to build this thing on my channel where we're just having genuine football conversations. I like the way mm. you think about football. Do you want to join man on the channel? I was like, bro, let's do it. And from then, I've been on Ranta's channel ever since. Since, yeah, I get you. We've done, yeah. we've done live streams together. We've done, we've done watch alongs uh, together. We've done mega streams together. We've done emergency meetings with you and everyone. I like so many emergency meetings. Uh, but yeah, facts, <laughs> facts, facts, <laughs> facts, facts, facts. So, yeah, and I think from then as well, I started to appreciate my own talent. And I knew that I wanted to take right. my channel into the direction that I wanted to take it in. Um, I have a lot of respect for a lot of people that, you know, do the content creation like we do. Um, but I think that a lot of people limit themselves by just, them. by just talking about one club. And I've always said this. This is why I respect people like you. I respect people like Rance. I respect people like Saeed because one day I can see on my YouTube feed, you're all doing a United stream. But then the next day... I'm seeing all of you, man, do a stream. I see, I see you do streams on international football. Okay. I see, I seen Saeed do a stream on Bundesliga the other day. Yeah. I see Rans do streams about uh, uh, La Liga. I see yeah. Rans do streams about Champions League. So you, you all understood that in order to reach different audiences, you have to diversify yourself. Facts. I think yeah. the biggest misconception is to to stick to one club. And do content on that one club for the rest of your life, bro. That is the biggest. It puts you in a box. Yeah, it puts you in a box. You in a box because you're you're only gonna be known as oh, that's that United guy. Mm, mm, mm. And I after I left United, the United stand, I quickly understood. Yeah, I need to try and utilize my my European football knowledge to the best of my abilities. Talk about. It. Which is why I created on my channel. I remember, I don't know if you remember, I created the European football show. Of course, fam. I remember being yeah. on there, the European football show. I remember exactly. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I loved it. With, I did it with Saeed and Norden. So it was yeah. all three of us. Every Thursday, we did it. Hmm. And then I brought you on. I brought JV on. I brought Stro yeah. on. Shout out to the guys. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Shout JV. So shout out Stro. I always try to make sure, yes, I'm a United fan, but I'm a football fan first. Hmm. And I don't want people to put me in a box and say, oh, Aaron's the United guy. No, I don't want <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get you. I get exactly I what you're that. saying. So very quickly I understood that. And I also tried to make sure that I incorporate the languages that I know into the football, the, the content that I make. So mm. I tried to do streams on different teams. I tried to maybe, I remember once um, United had to play PSG and I brought some guys from, and I brought some PSG fans on my channel. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I tried to do that. So, wow. yeah, man, um, that's why, like I said, I respect people like you, Saeed and Nordin and, and yeah. Rance, because you do streams on other things than just United. Oh, yeah, facts. Facts. Without doubt. I'm just, as bad as we are, I want to talk about us full stop. I'm not going to lie. Mean? I don't want to talk about us at all. If I could do no Manchester United watch alongs and not talk about us, I would love to. But unfortunately, I have to. I was saying, so, yeah, but unfortunately, um, I have to I look look at this guy. Big up to troops. It says like the hey, blood clot street people. Shout out, Aaron and Mr. Hey, by Mark. the way, hey, love every troops, time, troops. I remember the, the first time I met troops was Talk about it. Rance had his charity fight in in the O2 in London, and that's when I met troops the first time. I remember I arrived at one of my duns, and um, he was like, "Yo, let's pick up the other guys." No, it was after the fight. He was like, "Oh, let's let's go and join the other guys and chill for a bit before we leave." I was like, "All right, cool, say less." So we went to this car park near the O2. Roll the window. Like the person in the passenger seat rolls down the window. It's troops, isn't it? It's troops. <laughs> he rolls down the window. It's just bare smoke coming out his side of the window. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, 
<laughs> and I remember it like it was yesterday because he was vibing to that song. He was vibing to uh, Big Mood from K Trap. Okay. He was vibing to that. I still got the video on my phone because I remember I, I filmed him. That's what the first that's the first time I met Cruz. It's bro, he knows it's facts, bro. It's <laughs> That's when I understood. Go on. That's when I found out. The same way you see troops on camera, that's the same way he's off camera. Oh yeah, facts. A clean hearted, yeah. a clean hearted guy, full of jokes, a real guy. Do you know what I mean? The same for facts. X as well. I remember the first time I met X was at the Football okay. Blogging Awards in 2018. Yeah. The same way he's off camera is the same way he's on camera. And I, yeah. I can honestly, people like that, those are the type of people. I want to surround myself with people okay. that don't change. You're the same on camera and you're the same off camera. Mm. Yeah. Second time I met troops was that, um, I remember Ro uh, Robbie had this thing going on called blood brothers where, Oh um, yeah. The football, yeah, blood brothers was fighting. Blood yeah. brothers was fight. Hey, if just to clarify people, if you have not watched both seasons of blood brothers, that you was the best that. Thing, blood brothers, yeah. why it stopped. I have no idea. They need to bring that back. They, why they got brought it back expeditiously? Yeah, 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 why yeah. they stop that? I have no idea. Blood Brothers slapped both seasons. I was like, this is fire. That was premium, top quality content. But yeah, go on. Facts. Ahead. Yeah. So, uh, second time I met Truth was at the Blood Brothers event at the King Power Stadium in Leicester. Yeah. So, I went down there and there was other teams playing there. There was uh, AFTV, yeah. uh, there was an actual Blood Brothers team. Uh, I think the SC Dons were there as well, if I'm not wrong, and uh, someone else, but I can't remember. Yeah, but it was it, it was a cool it was a cool event, man, cool event. So yeah, that's how that's when I started to meet all of the guys that I used to watch: Troops, Robbie, um, Flex. Obviously, Flex and Rance, I already knew them from from the channel. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, like I said, I didn't want to limit I didn't want to limit myself to just United content. So yeah, so you've so obviously you've left then left the United stand. You know, I've obviously still working with Rant, still working with Saeed Nuruddin Straight Jacket Podcast. You're continuing to make content on your own channel. What was that transition like? Was there a certain number you was looking to? Was there a certain number of subscribers you was like, all right, goals should I say? Goals and milestones you're looking at once yeah. you've left. Because you're like you're no longer on the channel, so you don't have that big platform anymore. So yeah, more, so when I, I left work towards certain things. Talk about it. Yeah, when I left the channel, I had I think three thousand subscribers on um, on my on my channel. Yeah, that was in twenty the start at the start of twenty twenty. Yeah. Mid mid twenty twenty one, I reached ten k bro. So because I, I remember I was on I a stream with friends. I remember you hitting. 10K. We were doing a Champions League watch along, and everybody just subbed to my channel. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I and um, yeah, that was my goal reached, man. That was my goal reached, and I was I was happy. Yeah. I was glad with myself, and uh, do you know what I mean? It just shows like the hard work pays off. You just keep grinding. You just gotta keep grinding, in it. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people clowned me when I when I left the channel and said, "Ah, oh, you like Mark made you and stuff like that." Do you know what I mean? And then I hit ten k, and them same same people came to congratulate me. Yeah, chatting with <laughs> Egypt, man. That's what them so, people are, Egypt. For real. Yeah, so yeah, that, that was my goal and I was so happy that I reached a goal. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and obviously lockdown ended um, and I'm about to go into the, the, the next part of my, my before content. You go, before you go into the next part of the content, let's not skip the step. But before we do, there's over 220 people in here. Run hey, up come on, likes. man. Big up. We're only at 162 likes. Like check, one, two, one, two. Let's go up to up, 200 up. likes, people. Hit that like button, whether you're watching this live right now or watching this back. Big up to you if you're listening on one of the audio platforms as well, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Make sure you subscribe to Sarcasm City TV. Roll to 11K. We're at 10,738, 10,750 people. That's what we're looking for. 12. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's cool, man. Troops, you don't have to apologize here. You don't have to apologize, bro. You know what's crazy? All the time, Troops is in my chat verbally abusing me and he apologizes now, the joke, man. But big <laughs> up, Troops, anyway. Yeah, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you subscribe to Aaron's channel as well. Link is in the title. Lockdown, you mentioned how important it was for your channel. So talk about that. Was it, um, was it a calculated idea from you? Was it very meticulous in regards to, all right, lockdown, everyone's at home. Let me yeah. do more live streams. Yeah, 100%, because I knew that people were at home. 
I knew a lot of people were working from home, so you could work on your laptop, but like have something on the side and watch it. You know what I mean? Because I, I know I was working from home and I had um, I had AFTV on the side. I had rants on the side and, and watched them on my iPad. Uh, the I had, well, then it became the Flex and KG show. I had it on the side and watched that. I watched Saeed and, and his content. Like I watched everyone and I was working at the same time. So I was like, if I'm doing this, there's better other men that are doing the same thing. So yeah. let me carry on the live streams and just bang them out every day. You yeah, every day, every day. You know what I mean? Every day. That's, why, that's, that's how I did it. That's how I did it. So you're in lockdown. Like you said, during that period, you hit 10K. I remember these people because I was there because this is my introduction to the content creator space. And I would literally every day because everyone's in lockdown. We ain't doing nothing. Yo, you're welcome on the channel. Yeah, what we're talking about today, we were just chopping it up about everything and anything. It was me, Aaron was there, like you mentioned, Saeed, Nuruddin, JV, Stroll, the list goes on and on and on. So then you're in lockdown, channels thriving, numbers are thriving across socials all throughout that period. You then get to obviously lockdown is eased. When did the switch drop for you? Like, all right, I am going to transition away from the live streaming. Bear in mind, you're having great success. Yeah. So when was the idea to go, all right, I'm going to just go and commentate. I'm going to just go and be a stadium announcer. I'm just going to go and work with the zone. I'm just going to work and go interview footballers. Like, when did that switch happen? The, the It's funny because the interviewing footballers part happened during lockdown already. Oh, totally. Um, because, I, again, because I knew that everyone was at home, I was like, you know what, yeah? This might sound crazy, but let me just DM footballers and ask to, to interview them. Because what, what, what do I have to lose? Nothing. Yeah. The worst they can say is, nah. Or the yeah. worst they can do is, is ignore, ignore me. Yeah, leave me on red. So I was like, yeah. right, cool. But then I was very meticulous in choosing who to interview because I knew it would have been stupid for me to DM Rashford and go, yo, can I interview you? That's done. <laughs> yeah, I get you. He's, he's not going to see that. So I was like, hmm, there was this one guy that I used to watch all the way back in like 2014, 2015, ex-American international. His, his name's Jimmy Conrad and he had a YouTube channel called Kick TV. Okay. So I was like, let me try and message Jimmy Conrad. Yeah, you never know. So I DM'd him. I was like, hey, my name's Aaron. I'm a content creator. It's locked down. Nobody has nothing to do. Would you like me to interview you? Bro, he hit me back in like within 20 minutes. Yeah, and he was like, "Hey, dude, let's do it." <laughs> yes. I fucked with that. Yeah. Oh, raw. He you said, "Yeah, say less." Yeah. So obviously, we had to agree on a time because he lived all the way in LA, and I was here in the UK. So we had to figure out a time where both of his followers and my followers could tune in and watch the interview. Okay. So I interviewed him. I had a great chat, man. That was like my first time interviewing a footballer or ex-professional. So I prepared all of my questions and it was a good interview, man. It was a proper good interview. Mm -hmm. um, so look, Eddie said then, here, Eddie's obviously state status. says, Jimmy is huge here in the US. That's crazy. Hello, he is. Man. Yeah, he's huge over there. He's on he's on um, CBS a lot. Um, he does various things on other channels. And yeah, man, very big over there. Then I interviewed uh, an ex-Congolese international who played, who played most of his career here in the UK. Uh, he played for Peterborough. He played for, I think he played for Millwall. He yeah. played for um, lower league teams like Portsmouth and teams like that. So he played for them. So I messaged him through a contact that I had. Yeah. Again, he accepted. That was my second interview. Then I was like, let me go back to the Americans. Let me try and go do something over there. So I messaged Jimmy because we already had a good relationship. And I asked him, yeah. who do you think would be able or would be willing to do another interview with me on, on IG? He was like, you know what? Heath Pierce is, is a good one. So I was like, oh, okay. okay. So I messaged Heath Pierce. Again, he hit me back. Boom. Did an interview. And then, yeah, he told me crazy stories about how they went to the World Cup in, tw in 2010. Yeah. And they went out. They went. They went out clubbing the day before the game, and then got smashed. Like things like that. You know what I mean? Like, and he was <laughs> just like you don't get stories. You get stories like that from ex footballers that you normally wouldn't get, and that caught the attention, obviously, of certain people in big industries. But they didn't hit me up until like 2022. Okay, so that's where it came from. So just yeah. you using your intuition and just like, right, let me DM footballers and try yeah. and get interviews. So who were the companies that had watched you and then years later 
met contact yeah. you about it? So there was a guy at BBC that messaged me in 2022. Yeah. Uh, before I got the job at BBC, he messaged me and he was like, um, I actually remember watching your interviews during lockdown and you have this natural, you've got this natural ability of speaking well and making footballers feel comfortable to just chat to you because trust me, we wouldn't have gotten Jimmy Conrad on an interview at the BBC, yeah. but you just got him on a, on a random thing, just casually chopping it up, like just yeah. like he's your friend. And I was yeah, like, yeah, nah, yeah. actually, me and Jimmy talking, that was our first time chatting. Live but, it looked natural, but it looked natural on camera and natural. That's, that's testament yeah. to your skill set that's what it is because you are a fantastic interviewer so it's not even a surprise to hear that from like it's no shock to me whatsoever yeah so um then before i got the job at bbc i, I applied for something called uh the bbc new voices scheme because I, I i wanted to move away from like the live streaming thing and youtube thing and transition more into mainstream media if you like okay um i get that but because i didn't have the contacts i knew i had to move a certain way and i had to mm -hmm. maybe try and get a way in and do you know what i mean so when they announced the bbc new voices scheme and they said oh we're gonna train you to be commentators i was like oh i want to do that you was like you are yeah 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 so I applied for it. We had to go. We had to go through uh, a series of like tests, and you had to send in like commentary. And at that time, I'd never done commentary before, so I had to send in like a thirty-second audio of yeah. a game of my choice. And I remember I reacted. Uh, I did thirty seconds. Sorry, I did a minute and thirty seconds of the Brazil Germany game. Um, okay. So yeah, I did that. Sent it through, and they were like, "Yo, you've got a natural ability to." Um, when big things happen during the game, you've got this natural ability to speak well, speak loud. Your voice is made for this. Like you add to, you add to what's going on, and that's credit to you again, hosting yeah. commentary. That's why I said at the intro, there ain't nothing you can't do in this space, in my opinion. The most complete. We'll carry on. So, yeah, um, they got me onto the voice scheme, and then I was I ended up being one of the three winners. Um, and then for a year, so from, from like 2022 to 2023. I had like a mentor who did commentary for like 30 plus years and he would take me to games, uh, championship, league one, league two, and I would do commentary, radio commentary. And my commentary would be, um, my commentary would be recorded onto a machine. And then the audio from that would be sent back to me. And then we'd have a zoom session and he would tell me, this is what you did right. This is what you did wrong. We'd literally go through the whole 90 minutes. Okay. Yeah, kind of so like play, like kind of like being a player, and like your game's been the game's been filmed, and then your manager exactly. or coach sits down with you and says, "Look, this is what you did right. This is what you did wrong." That is crazy. Exactly. So, so I had a men so I had a mentor for about a year. Uh, meanwhile, obviously, I'm trying to you know build relationships here and there. Um, so yeah, 2023, the commentary side of it kind of died down a little bit um, because the mentorship was done. Yeah. Um, and obviously through my contacts and friends that I've got a bit uh, in, in, in Europe, one of my friends from Belgium called me and he was like, yo, this was last summer. Yeah. And he was like, yo, um, you do commentary, right? I said, yeah. Well, I've got something here, but it's, it's something different. So there's the under 19s women's Euros in Belgium and they're looking for a multilingual host. And when I say host, I mean like stadium speaker. So I'm like, oh, what do you mean? So am I going to be announcing goals and then saying, go? He was like, obviously not like that, but yeah, in that mode. So I was like, yeah, yeah I could see myself do that. So obviously I would quickly went online and see how different stadium speakers announce goals. Got you. And because the most, familiar, the most familiar voice of a stadium speaker that I had was the guy from Old Trafford. So yeah, I started yeah, to him up. <laughs> <laughs> so, the guy so who goes I, number 20, Diego Dello. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so I found myself saying stuff like he said it because that's the only familiar voice that I had. So uh, I would say I things. I understand. Because when the games were happening at the Euros in, in the under 19 women's Euros in Belgium, I had to announce things in three languages. Uh, talk about it, it, yeah, in three languages. Talk, hey, talk that to, bilingual business, man. Standing on bilingual business out here. Let's go, family. <laughs> I had to go. announce it. I had to announce it in English, French, and Dutch. 
And every time I said it in English, I found myself saying it like the guy from Old Trafford. So I was like, the referee has indicated a minimum of two minutes. Two minutes. So I was like... <laughs> Because that's your only reference, so it makes sense. That's my only reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense when you sound like him. I said, indicated of two minutes, two minutes had it on time. <laughs> Anyone who's been on traffic knows exactly what we're talking about. If you yeah, I'm saying, like, when you hear that yeah. substitution for your <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Facts. What you know what I'm saying? Guys, the actual factuals. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, substitution for right? Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's man. the only reference I had because that's the only voice that I kept hearing. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's funny, yo. That is bad for And I would, bro, it would be so similar to the guy from United that, like, at, in the 75th minute, I would even, I would do the same thing as him and announce the number of um, people that came to watch the game. Okay, I would do so the same thing. Right, I hear you. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Old Trafford tonight's attendance. <laughs> 75. Thank you for your support. It's like I'm saying, like, <laughs> that's exactly how he sounds. You've got it patterned as well. You know All the saying? games you've been to, you got it patterned. That's exactly how he sounds. But that's how how many games I've been to. So I've got his yeah. voice in my head yeah. sometimes. Do you know what I mean? So I went and did that. Obviously, that's another thing added to my CV. I already had the BBC commentary on my CV. Yeah. Um, and then uh at the towards the end of last year around my birthday in october uh aaron can you speak swahili no i can't unfortunately i wish i could man because my mum does sorry um so in october last year uh one of my brethren sent me a screenshot and it was saying that the zone are looking for commentators and i was like oh that's my way into getting back into commentary shout out to your brethren who sent that yeah man it was it was bits and bobs Oh, was it Bobs? Yeah, it was. It was, it was, oh, bit, it was oh, shout out Bobs, man. Oh, yeah, man, shout out yeah. bits and Bobs. Bobs sent me a screenshot and he was like, "Yo, we should get into this." So I messaged the people, at, uh, emailed the people at the zone, yeah. and bro, right there and then on the phone, we agreed on the day, agreed on a day to do a Zoom call, and we struck a deal right there and then, a one year freelance contract. Boom, there Ooh. you go. And yeah. talk that freelance contract with the zone business family. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so I'm, I'm on a freelance contract with them until next year, and then uh, sorry, until the until October this November this year, and then we'll see where this goes. Do you know what I mean? And they said predominantly I'll be commentating on the women's Spanish league and the women's Champions League. So um, yeah, man, that's how I got into back into commentary, and with the languages thing. And I know a lot of people always say it's impressive, and for a very long time I've played it down and i don't know why i keep doing this maybe it's because no. of my humble that's nature that's what the show's all about yeah it's giving you your flowers do not play it down when i say you are the most complete content creator from the space i mean that. like the amount of things that you are that you've done are doing and can do many people can't like 110 percent yeah 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 uh, this last comment yeah you yeah i was gonna I yeah, heard you were yeah. a radio commentary some time ago. Was it you? See? It was me because one of my one of my good friends, um, George Addo, works for BBC World, and he was looking for a co-commentator to do commentary for Champions League games, but um, a Champions Champions League games, but on Ghana, Ghanaian radio. So he was doing it from here in the UK, but obviously through technology and all of these things, we managed to get on air in Ghana. So he was like, yo, do you want to do it? I was like, yeah, cool, let's do it. So for certain for certain Champions League games on Ghanaian radio, Joy FM, we were on Joy FM doing the commentary. Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. Now, Jesse aired it because it was you, so I'm glad he aired you. But he says, I actually heard Aaron randomly one time in one of the Women's Champions League game in French. I yeah, that was asking me. on the same day, but was aired, paid. Yeah, hold that, man. I'm glad he ignored you. You should have ignored <laughs> me again. You just talk about that. How about that? Well, uh, large up to my brother Jez as well. But this is crazy. yeah. Um, this is in crazy. regards to the languages, like I said, I kept playing it down because of my humble nature in it. But yeah. I'm gonna go ahead because you've said it. Many people have said it. Talk about it. I've been told this thing as recently as two days ago when I was in Paris interviewing Louis Saha. Someone told me. Aaron, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this as well, and this is gonna sound crazy to a lot of people. But this is probably say gonna get what... this is probably gonna get clipped, but listen, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. When it comes to this media thing, and when it comes to hosting, presenting, 
interviewing, doing match reactions, whatever it is, doing it in different languages, let's just say four, and switching between those languages, apart from Kate Abdo, nobody can do what I do. Talk about it. I agree. Fully agree. I genuinely yeah, mean it when I say you're the most complete. You're the most complete in this space. You're the most complete person to come from this content creator space. Because I, I do it all at a high level. Like you're you're a jack of all trades and a master of all trades. That's what it is. Because carry on. the Premier League's coming back this weekend, isn't it? Arsenal, yeah. let's say the Arsenal City game. Yeah. If someone was to say, Aaron, can you do a match reaction on the Arsenal City game in French, Dutch, German, and English? I could say, yeah, I can do that. Absolutely. And I'll be sending you four different videos all of different 10 minutes, of content. four pieces of content, 10 minutes straight of doing a match reaction. Talk about it. Yeah. It's crazy. Talk Obviously, I'm not... I'll give you your flowers. That's what this show, that's what the Sarcasm City TV specials are all about, is giving people their flowers and then realising, and the fact that you've said that, I love that. Because Rance on his special did the exact same thing where he realised everything he'd done and he was like... I'm just realizing all the all the cold stuff I've done. Literally. Like that's what it's about is letting people, yes, you have goals, aspirations, you're meticulous with your approach, and you got things, goals and things you want to reach. However, I'm here to remind you everything you've done up until this point. Like don't look Absolutely. just look at how far you've got to go in your journey. Look how far along you've come on your journey from. Look how far along you've like on all the things you've done. From now, from the beginning, sorry, up until this point, I'm telling you. Along the way, obviously, I've, I've met a lot of amazing people. I even forgot to mention the likes of DR Sports, a, a very nice platform which I've been shout on. Out DR Sports, shout out Don Robbie. Shout out Don Robbie every single time. That guy is, for people like us in the content creation space, he's, he's, he's an example. He's honestly an example and a good example to follow. Do you know what I mean? A very good example to follow. And... Yeah, like I said, you know, the work has been coming in this this year, especially because last year was kind of dry, apart from towards the end when um, when the commentary thing came about. Um, this year, especially the job that I just done now was probably the biggest up to date. Um, I went to Paris for the launch of the new kit. And All right, let's not skip by that. How did yeah. that come about? How did going um, to Paris, like getting contacted about going to Paris for the launch of the new kit? That came through me going out here in Manchester and meeting someone that works uh, in marketing and, you know, works with brands and federations to make those kind of things happen randomly, bro. Jeez. Because I'm someone who doesn't really like to go out in it. Like I like to be at home. I like to be inside and I like to be indoors and just, I don't know, watch Don't football, watch like movies. That. Especially if it's cold outside, I ain't going nothing to the outside. Yeah, yeah, trust me. I mean, yeah. so when I did go outside that one time, it was actually a birthday party. Sorry, it was a birthday party of a mutual friend. And I met the guy and he was like, so what do you do in life? And we just started chopping it up. And he was like, I think I might have something for you because there's the new, the new kits of, of France are going to be announced around March time. And they're going to need someone to go into their stores in Paris and interview fans that are going to come in and buy the new kit. But the problem is the, pr the person needs to be multilingual. And I'm like, listen, I'm your guy. We exchanged numbers, exchanged emails, and it literally happened. I flew to Paris on Wednesday. Everything got paid for. Flew to Paris, got there the next day, um, interviewed fans in French and English. Okay. And uh, at one point, bro, I went to grab some food, walked out the shop, and Louis Saha just... Was part Louis Saha was parking his moped. Bad. Parking his moped. Obviously, I went inside, had my food, yeah. and uh, he went and got his. No, he went and got went inside for a bit, then came out. Um, we met in in the we met in the hallway, and bro, no word of a lie. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I mean, if I'm if I'm lying, I'm flying. Yeah. I don't know if I said it correctly, but anyway, uh, so it, it works right. Yeah. It, 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 Curtains on the wall, shout out to Saeed. We yeah, shout out to Saeed. Yeah, shout yeah, 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 yeah. When you must, so, you must, man. Go on. Me and Saha meet. I shake his hand and I say, oh, how you doing? No word of a lie, bro. He looks at me and he goes, I've seen you before. I'm like, what? Yeah. I said, I said nah, that's impossible. We've never met. He said, no, 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 no. Trust me. I recognize faces very well. So I know what I'm saying when I say, I've seen you before. Where do you live? I said, oh, I live in Manchester. And he's like, what do you do for a living? Well, just, you know, content. He's like, that's where I've seen you. I think I've seen you online. 
I was like, raw. That's mad. Louis Saha recognized you. Bruv. That's crazy. The Lord is my witness, bro. He said that. Louis Saha was like, I know you. Yeah, that's got to be a, like, oh, I'm I'm him. Yes. In, in that moment, yeah, I was him. In that I'm moment. him. I am oh. him. Because he said that, I think that made the encounter a bit more smooth. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we had a chat before the interview. Um, and then we did the actual interview. And trust me, I've interviewed footballers before, ex-footballers in, in this case. This is the best conversation I've had with the next footballer. The best. Like, we finished the interview and he was like, have I answered everything correctly? If you want, I can stay longer. I can answer more questions. Like, proper good guy, bro. Yeah. And then afterwards, he had a few hours to spare before he went back to catch his train. My man went out, bought some KFC, came back. We had some food and we, we, we talked, bro. So you just chopped it up? Just chopped it up, bro. Casually with Louis Saha eating a KFC, bro. <laughs> That's mad. Uh, Louis Saha. And they, like you said, the interview. And people, where can people catch that interview as well? So the interview's not out yet, but when it does, obviously you'll, you'll okay. see it. And I'll, I'll let you guys yes. know on my socials and whatnot. But um, yeah, man, it was a unique experience to be talking to someone like Louis Saha, bro. Um, he actually, he was telling a funny story. Um, <laughs> he was telling a funny story of when they played Champions League football. Um, he he was on the bench with Carlos Tevez. He was explaining how how mad this guy is in his head. Like he's he's crazy. Um, and he was like, he was on the bench with Carlos, and the gaffer is. No, he's constantly, Carlos Tevez is constantly looking at Sir Alex Ferguson to kind of give him the, the, the sign, like, yo, tell man to warm up. Yeah. So Alex Ferguson's not, he's not saying anything. So he tells Luis Saha and Carlos Tevez to go, to go warm up. Oh, so they go warm up. And then he tells them to go sit back down, sit back down. Now Carlos Tevez is getting annoyed. He's like, yeah. why am I not getting on? Like, what's it? So he keeps looking at the gaffer. Gaffer's not looking at him. Keeps looking at the gaffer. Gaffer's not looking at him. And then Louis Saha said, and then he did the craziest thing. Tevez went to warm up by himself. Nobody told him. He just went and warmed up. He just went and warmed up. And he said he did so many sprints to show the gaffer that he was ready to come on. <laughs> that sounds like Tevez. He a workaholic like that. It sounds so like many Tevez. sprints to show the gaffer that he was ready to come on. That eventually yeah. the gaffer was like, yo, Carlos. He came yeah. on and he scored. So... Yeah, man, it was a it was a proper good chat prior to the interview, during the interview, and even after the interview, bro. Um, we spoke about some personal stuff as well, and then yeah, man, we exchanged Instagram accounts, and yeah, that that, that was that. that. That's fine. That that. Yeah, man, proper good experience. So yeah, um, everything I've been through, man, in this content journey has led me up to this point. Um, mm -hmm. I don't regret anything that happened because. I believe. I said I, apo I apologize to absolutely fucking nobody. Sorry, go on, carry on. <laughs> oh, it's true, bro. It's true. <laughs> Love that. Absolutely I, nobody. The devil chant does what the fuck he wants. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it should be for real. And just to quickly, the Louis Saha interview. Who actually had set that up? Who set that up? Um, it was my contact. That? Oh, it was my contact. Okay, okay. All right, fire, fire. Yeah, you do a lot. Like I say, being in interviewing Louis Saha, being recognized by Louis Saha, the zone commentary, stadium commentary for an international tournament, working with the BBC, like outside of, and that's just outside of all the content creator space, like blowing up in this space, going viral, etc. Your own channel, working with Rance, working with Saeed, working with Noradin, etc. Troops, the list goes on and on. AFTV, DR Sports, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. yeah. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm proud of my journey and Should this be. was only the beginning because um, I heard someone, sorry, I read someone in the comments earlier say um, we need to get Aaron on B in sport for, for AFCON. That's my next target to try and do commentary for AFCON next year. Need you for AFCON. Definitely. 110% need you for AFCON without doubt. So it sounds weird to say, let's say this, but What's the, the next step for you now? Like currently, what are you looking to do? Obviously, you just mentioned there AFCON. Is there any other goals you look to have? Are you going to continue on with the commentary? Well, you already said yeah. you are going to, but like the commentary outside of AFCON, is there anything else you're looking to do 
outside yeah. of the zone. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm looking uh, to travel to Germany for the Euros and just create as much content as I can over there. Um, okay. You know, the, the languages part is definitely going to help because I'll be able to speak to different set of fans yeah. and sorry, to different sets of fans. And that's definitely going to help. And the content's going to be gold. You know, recently, my YouTube hasn't been that active. I'm more active on like TikTok and, and Instagram, but it's definitely been paying off because the opportunities I got from there are massive. So um yeah the euros are coming up literally in in like what two three months so i'm yeah, looking summer. forward um, i'm looking forward to traveling to germany and go do stuff over there man that's uh, that's my next goal jeez you're yeah, doing so much fam. like i said man proud super proud and for not only am i proud for really deserved as well and if you. It, if you take anything from these people see how, how many times aaron has just made his own look by betting on himself yeah bet on your skill bet on your talent be meticulous with your approach. Always try and improve your talents and look what can happen, people. Look what can happen as with the zone. And you said your contract with the zone is now for a year. And you never yeah. know where that could lead to because of how many sports the zone have and how many contracts True. they have. True. So you never know where that, where that can lead to. You never ever know. It's crazy. It is. It's nuts. But yeah, before um we close out. Just quickly, actually, before we even close out, run up the likes, hit the share button, Come make on, sure people. you subscribe. Have we missed anything that you've done? Because like I say, your resume is long, fam. Is there anything you've done that we have actually missed? Um, anyone you've worked with? Or no, any companies that... you've worked with? I think we've actually covered it all. Yeah, I think we've covered it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we've covered everything. I was even trying to think as well, but I think we've covered everything. Um, so, yeah, I think one thing I can probably learn for the future is to really believe in my abilities and not always play the humble card sometimes yes i can say listen in this business <laughs> yeah sorry go on. in this sometimes i actually have to back my own qualities and go you know what i can do this i am the best at what i do so yes in this business i'll say it again in this business when it comes to doing things in different languages Apart from Kate Abdo and maybe Thierry Henry, nobody's on my level. That's Nobody can do what I do. Talk and touch me. Talk about it. You know what I'm because saying? Basically. Of, oh. and even, even on TV, a lot of pundits limit themselves by just talking about the Premier League. And I'll be completely real, bro. Do you know how many pundits that I like? And I'm not going to name them, but do you know how many pundits I like that could go on to do wonderful things, but... They're just so focused on Premier League, Premier League, Premier League, Premier League. Yeah. Oh, you're limiting yourself too much, man. Look at Jamie Carragher. He's doing Champions League football and he's doing amazing. Yeah, he's doing amazing. Yeah, facts. Look at Michael facts. Richards doing Champions League football, doing amazing. Don't yeah. even get me don't even get me started on Thierry Henry because when he comes back to the UK, he's schooling, man. Yeah, he's doing bits. Yeah, facts. Facts. It's crazy. So that's it's... why I'm always that's why I'm always onto people and I, I try to encourage people to watch, uh, to watch different leagues. Even if you don't, if your interest is not there, try and watch it from a different perspective. Not because you, you're not going to like it, but because you want to learn something. Because I promise you, it will help you in one way or another. Talk about it. Talk in about one it. way or another. Take the words of wisdom, people, from the from people doing it. Take the words of wisdom. I'm telling you right now. Take the words of wisdom. 100%. It's crazy. I say, man, your story's mad, you know. Hey, I your appreciate your you, story man. is crazy, fam. And again, to say this, genuinely mean it. I tell you this all the time. Privately, I say it. Publicly, I say it. Love for everything you've done for man in particular in this space. Appreciate it, man. Because I said, you put me on. You brought me into this thing. I was like, yeah, Flawless is cold at what he does, so I appreciate it. Because if you don't make that call to pie, I don't have the success at the rate I've had it and so quickly and get endorsed by everybody else in the manner. Because you was the first person to say, Flawless, Sarcasm, City TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 the, it's the place. It's a place to be over here. So I appreciate Absolutely. that, man. Bringing me on all those, or genuinely bringing me on all those watch-alongs during lockdown. Like, you helped me become a star. Like, you did. Family. And I still got, like you, I still got aspirations and goals I'm trying to hit, but like, love to you for that. Even being able to do these specials, the contacts I have, and I exhaust all my contacts to get everyone on, that's due to you. That's I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Man. You, you're serious? I appreciate you, man. Love Nothing but love for you for that, brother, man. For real, for real. 
And yes, Eddie says there, 200, I mean, sorry, two more to go. Get us up to 200 likes, people. Come on, people, two, well. more yeah. so, two more likes. Two more. Two more likes. We are going to close out and we will be redirecting to the back again pod as well. Uh, big up to DF World for the super chat. He says he played against Ribery. He played pro football. That is a fact. And if you've just joined, because shout out to Rhino, big up Roms, everyone else in the chat. If you're watching this back or if you rewind, we did that near the start of the video as well. Start yeah. of the live stream, I should say, where Aaron spoke in depth about going pro, um about playing professional football and everything that went on and yes times facts oh we love Aaron and facts and this is someone who in this space where it's cutthroat and Aaron mentioned about the ugly side of football and yeah. how in part there's an ugly side to football content creating as well this guy no one ever says anything bad about Aaron notice that <laughs> in this space whether it's me whether it's a troops in the chat, whether it's anyone who's ever met him doesn't matter if it's a, a bigger content creator someone on his level or someone lower I was saying in that. So shout out to Aaron each and every time, man. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate it, man. Time. Shout out to, yeah, to Tons as well, man, because she's been there from the beginning, bro. Like, yeah. Tons has been watching all of our streams from the get-go, from the very, very start. So shout out to Tons, man. Yeah, yeah. Big up to Tons each and every time and big up to each and every one of you lot as well. Yeah, bear with me, people. I'm literally just messaging the group chat about back again because we late, but obviously I had to get Aaron on to right. tell his story. But Eddie, someone just... Eddie, Go off, go off, go off. No, I'm, I'm just seeing someone in the comments that Warrior J93, he said, what up, though? And it just reminded me, I need to watch BMF. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch BMF. I've been watching it still. Yeah, 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 yeah. BMF is crazy, but it is good, man. You know what I'm saying? It's not power level, but it's very good still. Yeah, it's like, very good. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. Raising Canaan set the bar too high. Way they too high, the bar too high with the acting, Way too man. high. Like, they got here. Fucking yeah. God here. You know what I'm saying? God tear like for, for real for real and patina miller is absolutely beautiful but that's a whole nother, it's a whole other thing but yes love to everyone who has locked in big up much appreciated hope you enjoyed the show don't forget we're available on all audio platforms spotify itunes soundcloud etc etc anything you want to add quickly before we close out from um i want to thank you man because you you've been doing these specials um and i want you to get your flowers as well man you've been putting in incredible amounts of work your your level of consistency in the streams is crazy bro like you do streams at times where people are sleeping bruv like <laughs> you know? okay. especially especially when you do your a nba streams oh god man i don't know i don't think i'd be able to do that man honestly I appreciate it, man. So, I appreciate so i've got it. to give you your flowers as well man i'm happy to see you thrive the way you're thriving do the streams that you're doing i love i, I love you yeah, especially when you're on back again that is you <laughs> at your best you know what i mean when you're on back again podcast that's you at your best fam do you know what i mean hey, love fam. love fam appreciate it man appreciate it and it's good to be able to chop it up with you and get your backstory as well man hey big up rums man love for the kind words but yeah we are gonna close out the kind of see you says do a reverse special where aaron is interviewing you flawless we may have to do that one day but i'm still trying to yeah, work to get to the special but yes yeah, aaron will be well love to everyone that's locked in we are going to redirect to the back again podcast so what i need you lot to put in the chat is the stars are aligning and then put stars. That's what let I need me, you to do. Let me go with you. Has, you. Stars are aligning, so we're going to redirect. But right. look to everyone who has locked in. And this has been a sarcasm, another Sarcasm City TV special with special guest Aaron live on the Sarcasm City TV YouTube. Big up. Thank you very much for tuning in. Love for everything you've done for me, Aaron. And see you lot. On Come the on, bro. Pod.